the meeting of the Committee on Finance, Subcommittee J, is now called to order. Uh, may I call on the Committee Secretary to recognize our guests this morning for the record. Hello, good morning. For the Department of Tourism, we have Secretary Maria Esperanza Cristina Garcia Frasco. Good morning, ma'am. Together with the Legal and Special Concerns and Chief of Staff, Yusek May Elaine Batan. Morning. Uh, Yusek for Administration and Finance, Yusek Shireen Gail C. Yu Pamintuan. From the Office of the Secretary, we also have Yusek Ferdinand Humapao. Uh, we have Yusek Shalimar Hofer Tamano, Tourism Regulation, Coordination and Resource Generation, or TRCRG. We have ASEC Reynaldo Ching, Administration and Finance. We have ASEC Christopher Morales, Regional Monitoring Services. We have the Officer in Charge of the Office of the Industry Manpower Development, Director Arlene Alipio. We have the Officer in Charge, Assistant Secretary Warner M. Andrada, Tourism Development and Office of Tourism Development Planning, Research and Information Management. We also have the Chief of Legislative Liaison Unit and, uh, and its DLLO Officer, Attorney Gliza Sarmiento. Uh, online attendees would be Mr. Roman Bersamina and Mr. Orlando Brian Du. From the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, or TESA, we have COO Mark Lapid from the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority. Good morning, sir. Uh, the Assistant Chief Operating Officer, Administration and Finance, Attorney Joy Bulawitan. Uh, online attendees for TESA, we have Mr. Rex Imbok. For the Intramuros Administration, we have Mr. Edgardo Baisik. Officer in charge of the Intramuros Administration or IA. Online attendee is Ms. Or Ms. Sandra Martinez and Mr. Mark Lawrence Orenia. For the Tourism Promotions Board or TPB, we have COO Maria Margarita Montemayor Nograles and Attorney Charles M. Bautista, OIC Tourism Promotions Board. Uh, from the Nine Filipino Foundation, we have Ms. Herturas Duran Batocabe, Executive Director. From the National Parks Development Committee, or NPDC, Ms. Cecil Lorenzana Romero, Executive Director. And its online attendees, Ms. Rosalina Tenepere and Mr. Heherson Martinez. From the Duty Free Philippines Corporation, DFPC, we have COO Vicente Pelayo Angala. Uh, from the Philippine Retirement Authority, PRA, Attorney Bienvenido K. Chi. And its online attendees, Mr. Mervin Magbuhat, Ms. Maritrea Vasquez, Ms. Rain Cabangon, and Mr. Ray Abaygar. From the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving, PCSSD, we have its Executive Director, Mr. Marco Angelo Ancheta. And its online attendees, Director Virgilio Magigad and Director Paulo Benito Estugbang. We have Regional Directors, Director Jovita Ganongan from CAR, Director Fanny Beth Domingo, Region 2, Director Christine Mancinares, Region 6, Director Karina Rosas Tiopes, Rosa Tiopes, Region 8, Director Nelia Arinia, Region 13. We also have Commission on Audit Representatives and DBM Representatives. Madam Chair. Maraming salamat, Comsec. Uh, may I now recognize Secretary Frasco for any opening statement or a presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Madam Chair, the Honorable Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, as well as the esteemed members of this committee, Mayung Buntag. I am here today together with the officials of the Department of Tourism as well as its attached agencies first to express our profound gratitude to the members of the Senate for their continued support of the Department of Tourism. 
we have high hopes that with the continuation of your support, especially in terms of our budget, we would be able to actualize the president's vision to transform the tourism industry into one of the major economic pillars for our country's resurgence. According to the United Nations WTO, tourism has experienced deepening and continued growth, notwithstanding the pandemic. Modern tourism is closely linked to development and encompasses a growing number of destinations. These dynamics have turned tourism into a key driver for social economic progress. However, as you know, tourism bears the brunt of the pandemic and is one of the most effective, affected industries in our country. I myself, having come from Cebu, whose lifeblood is tourism, have personally witnessed the ravages of the pandemic as well as various calamities. However, despite challenges and limitations that we continue to face, the Department of Tourism is focused in its effort to build a resilient, inclusive, and sustainable tourism industry, knowing fully well that countless lives depend on tourism for their survival. Well, tourism came to a standstill overnight. I come here with the good news that as of today, the industry is recovering at a promising pace. Businesses have resumed, people have regained most of their work, and the pandemic is within our control in a sense that we now have a better idea of dealing with it. Vaccination rates are high, and the booster vaccination efforts of the government continue. But there's much work that needs to be done. Our greatest challenge now is not only to regain our pre-pandemic numbers, to exceed it. Knowing fully well the potential of our country to take a primary place globally. On behalf of the Department of Tourism, I present to you the programs and plans of the department and its budget proposal for fiscal year 2023. Our presentation today will cover the following. First, the performance of the tourism industry. Second, the agency's policy thrust for fiscal year 2023. Third, and finally, the DOT's proposed budget for the next fiscal year. To provide context and meaning to our budget, Allow me to provide you with a picture of the current state of the Philippine tourism industry. From a global perspective, tourism experienced a 3.8% upturn in 2021, according to the latest edition of the UN World Tourism Organization's World Tourism Barometer. However, figures remain far below pre-pandemic numbers, which was at 1.46 billion in 2019, of the 415 million international tourist arrivals in 2021. The ASEAN region recorded the sharpest decline in visitor arrivals, ranging from 85% to as much as 97% in 2021. The Philippines registered a decline of 88.95% from 1.4 million tourist arrivals in 2020 to just 163,000 arrivals in 2021. A closer look at visitor arrivals from 2018 to 2022. Sec. Yes. And then so 163,000 counted by mga balik bayans natin, All arrivals, Senator. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you. A closer look at the visitor arrivals from 2018 to 2022 shows how much the COVID-19 pandemic severely impacted and disrupted the tourism industry. In 2019, the Philippines achieved its highest numbers in terms of foreign arrivals, domestic trips, tourism revenue, and employment. However, our country suffered an 82% decline from 8.26 million international tourist arrivals in 2019 to only 1.48 million arrivals in 2020. As mentioned earlier, the number dipped further to 163,000 arrivals in 2021. 
But we are pleased to share with you, Madam Chair, the good news that as of October 5, 2022, the Philippines has welcomed 1,664,550 international arrivals, counted as of February 10 this year. Please note that per the internal projections of the DOT, they had projected that we would only receive 1.7 million tourists by December of this year. Therefore, this shows an upward trend in arrivals and that the present strategies that we have recalibrated and applied since the beginning of this administration have led to an upsurge in arrivals and will allow us to exceed present projections of 1.7 million by the end of the year. Since we reopened our country's... Yes, Madam Do Chair. Have a data of um, our neighboring countries. Kung yes, ilan ang arrivals sila. Just, just submit it to the committee. Yes, Madam Chair. We would be happy to submit that to you. Since we reopened our country's top five source markets, include the USA, which registered 315,279 arrivals, Korea, with over 220,000, Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom. For the past three years, Korea, the US, Japan, and China were our consistent source markets. With regard to domestic trips, in 2021, it's recorded at 37 million or 38.16% the trips in 2019 pre-pandemic levels. This 70% decline resulted to a significant decrease of 82.3% in domestic tourism expenditure. As a result of the massive drop in visitor arrivals and domestic trips, the tourism sector suffered a significant decrease of 89.67% in visitor spending or tourist receipts from the year 2019, a whopping 82.24 billion recorded in the same period in 2020. In 2021, as you can deduce from the graph, there is a further decline in for visitor spending. However, while there is a decline in revenue, we are pleased to report that gradually domestic trips are picking up. Domestic trips for 2021 is higher by 38.16% compared to the 26.9 million trips recorded in 2020. With regard to our key destinations in the Philippines, according to our data, the frequently visited destinations before and during the pandemic are consistent with regard to the provinces of Cebu, the National Capital Region, and Rizal. On the aspect of employment and tourism-related industries, since the start of the pandemic, the share of employment in tourism industries vis-a-vis -vis total employment has been dwindling. Closure of tourism businesses resulted to a decline in tourism employment to 11.1% of the total jobs in the country, compared to the 18.1% share in 2019. But today, we bring you another good news from the Philippine Statistics Authority that shows an increase in employment of persons in tourism industries which is now pegged at 4.9 million, or 4.6% higher than the 4.68 million employed individuals in the previous year. This contributed 11.1% to the total employment of the country. We are all aware of the benefits that tourism brings to our country. Quantitatively, as far as our GDP is concerned, the tourism industry contributed 5.2% to the country's total economic output in 2021. This is a 60% drop from 2019, where the tourism industry's contribution was at 2.5 trillion pesos, or 12% of the country's total GDP pandemic.
With regard to the product portfolios of the Philippines, it currently has 10 tourism product portfolios. This is quite similar to what is being offered by our ASEAN member states. According to the World Development Indicators of the World Bank for Travel and Tourism, the dominant products of the Philippines are sun and beach, nature adventure, culture, marine sports, and farm. These are practically identical to what is being offered by Thailand and Malaysia, who rank first and second among ASEAN member states. However, notwithstanding the similarities in our product offerings, we are aware that uh, we rank only fifth or sixth in the ASEAN region in terms of tourist arrivals. And so what we did was to study the pillars of competitiveness and to try to understand why, notwithstanding the similarities of our offerings, and dare I say, the better quality of our offerings in the Philippines vis-a-vis -vis our neighbors, why we still rank lower in terms of arrivals. If you look at the competitiveness index of the World Economic Forum, it indicates that there are several criteria for determining, determining a country's competitiveness in terms of tourism. First is the enabling environment, wherein we rank very low at the 93rd spot. Next, the policy and enabling conditions, with the Philippines ranking at number 53, followed by infrastructure, the Philippines ranking at number 80. Natural cultural resources with the Philippines ranking at 46, leading to an overall ranking of number 75 as far as our ranking vis-a-vis -vis our ASEAN neighbors. Sec, highest na natin yung 75. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Now, if I may direct your attention to the comparative table of the Travel and Tourism Competitive Index, which will demonstrate to you where we are vis-a-vis -vis our ASEAN neighbors. So this can be gleaned from the table from 2017 to 2021. So of 2021, Singapore ranks number one, Indonesia number two, Thailand, number three, Malaysia, number four, Vietnam is fifth, and the Philippines ranks number six, in the ASEAN and 75th globally. This demonstrates that there is an urgent need to perform at a higher level and to improve the criteria for tourism competitiveness. And this ultimately what guided us in our recalibration of strategies approaching the tourism portfolio under this new administration. Before I accepted the offer to lead the Department of Tourism, I made sure to study our neighbors and to examine why it is that notwithstanding the quality of our natural resources, which fare far better than our neighbors, we rank quite low in the ASEAN and in the world. As well, I studied all the national tourism development plans of our ASEAN neighbors and discovered the factors that make their strategies variably different from ours. First, the ministries of tourism of our ASEAN neighbors are considered major departments in their governments in terms of funding. They're allocated with massive funding and that has corresponded to their massive success in terms of performance in the ASEAN and globally. Second, their strategies are firmly anchored on the strength of their identity and culture, and therefore approaching our programs and plans and recalibration of existing programs, we try to incorporate and benchmark some of these strategies if only to ensure that we proceed post-pandemic from an equal playing field. In order to educate myself on the real challenges being faced by our tourism stakeholders upon taking on the tourism portfolio, 
I immediately engaged in listening tours with tourism stakeholders from all 16 regions of the country. I met with our regional directors, stakeholders from the public and private sector, ranging from the hotel and accommodation services providers, tour operators, travel agencies, airlines, airport providers and operators, seaports, and the like. From these listening tours, we were able to identify the prevailing challenges faced by the industry to date. And these include gateway access, infrastructure, health and safety, and the massive economic impact of the pandemic. Uh, I would like, rec like to recognize our Deputy Minority Floor Leader, J.V. Ejercito, the, ano nga ikaw? the good one. <laughs> Please proceed. Good morning, Senator. On top of the challenges faced by the industry, the sector has continuously faced challenges in the equalization of promotion and the lack of employment opportunities, of which were worsened by the pandemic. With the current state of the tourism industry in mind, we move towards the policy thrust of the current administration to working towards addressing the gaps of the tourism sector and the many areas for improvement. The DOT's policy thrust is crafted pursuant to President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr.'s vision of transforming the tourism industry as a major pillar for economic recovery. The President himself has recognized the invaluable role that the tourism sector plays in the promotion of the Filipino brand. He underscored that it is time to welcome the rest of the world with an enhanced Filipino brand that is unique, attractive, and creative. Aside from his vision for the tourism industry to be an important economic development tool, the president noted opportunities the sector creates in terms of regular employment and even job creation at the grassroots is undeniable. Therefore, the president directed the agency to lead the programs that will make it more convenient for travelers to go around the country to remote areas to help promote and discover tourist spots. Of course, with the help of our partner agencies, including the DPWH. Lastly, President Marcos endeavors to rebuild the country's world-class creative industries in order to generate more jobs and add more value for the Philippine tourism industry. In pursuit of the President's vision for the tourism industry, I am pleased to share with the esteemed members of this committee the seven-point agenda identified by the Department to be carried out in the next few years that shall help alleviate current challenges that we face. We shall work towards the following seven main objectives. First, improving tourism infrastructure and accessibility. Second, establishing a cohesive and comprehensive digitalization and connectivity. Third, enhancing the overall tourist experience. Fourth, equalizing tourism product development and promotion. Fifth, the diversification of our portfolio through multidimensional tourism. Sixth, the maximization of domestic tourism. And seventh, strengthening of tourism governance through close collaboration with LGUs and public and private stakeholders. In fulfillment of these seven point objectives of the DOT, we shall focus on three key strategies, namely connectivity, convenience, and equality. First, with regard to connectivity. We aim to ensure that our tourist destinations are accessible, improved transportation networks, digitalization of tourist services, as well as improvement of infrastructure. This means aggressive infrastructure development that provides quality access to roads, bridges, water systems, and various methods of transportation by land, sea, and air. As the primary gateway to the country, Airports and seaports play an integral role in the overall tourist experience and the tourism value chain. 
I've met with the Department of Transportation, Secretary Jaime Bautista, to discuss the resumption of pre-pandemic routes to minimize congestion in airports, and met as well with airline providers to this effect. The opening of new local and domestic routes was also proposed by the department given the positive developments in travel conditions and demands. We have also, we're also partnering with the Department of Information, Communications and Technology to focus on improving internet service availability and connectivity in our key destinations, as well as the building of tourism intelligence arm us with the data and the knowledge necessary to improve the entire tourist experience. We're also creating a tourist life cycle app, which will serve as a super app that aims to connect tourists to accredited tourism establishments for accommodation, food, shopping, rides to transportation, tour operators, tour guides, and the like. The second aspect of our key strategy is convenience which aims to enhance the overall tourist experience as well as improve ease of movement across the Philippines. We're focused on giving attention to the little things that matter in tourism. We will not be short in giving our tourists the fully enhanced Filipino tourism experience. We envision improving our existing facilities in both land and sea by making it more effective, efficient, aesthetically appealing, and most importantly, reflective of the Filipino brand. Overall, we want the experience of coming to the Philippines and coming across the Philippines to be positive for all senses. Therefore, we will incorporate distinct Filipino brands from our gateways, from design, furniture, uniform signages, to guide tourists and passengers regarding time and distance to gates. We will also push for a passenger experience that is seamless, stress-free, and with more efficient service and reduced passenger waiting time. The most important aspect that we will be introducing to enhance the tourism experience is the development of a tourist assistance call center. At the moment, if you're a tourist in the Philippines and you encounter problems or scams, of any form, you simply do not know who to call or where to go. We plan to change that by providing a one-stop shop for tourists that they may be able to obtain information and assistance that they need so that their experience in the Philippines will be memorable and that they feel safe and secure as they travel across the country. With regard to the improvement of our gateways, we have identified as pilot projects the Naia Terminal 2, the Davao International Airport, and the Cebu City Pier 1. We have coordinated with the Department of Transportation to oversee a smooth facilitation of the beautification of all of our ports. In our ports, we will have a one-stop shop for land, air, and sea connectivity with provision for digitalized service to facilitate efficiency and travel. The department will also provide in all our gateways a tourist information desk with trained personnel to facilitate visitor information and concerns. As you can see from the screen at the bottom, that would be the prototype, the tourist assistance desk that we will be putting in the airports, reflective of the Filipino brand. And you have a budget allocation for this already? Yes, uh, we are utilizing the budget of the present year, Madam Chair. Okay. But uh, to continue with the other gateways, uh, we beg your kind indulgence to approve our budget for this for the coming year. Actually, naman nandito yung chairperson for the budget of DOTR. Kasi baka pwedeng i-launch na lang natin dun sa budget ng DOTR. We don't mind that at all. As, as part of the <laughs> rehabilitation. <laughs> And uh, to uh, convince the committee further, I am very pleased to share with you the prototypes of the designs which are reflected on the screen. So we are now presently at 80% on the design development of the proposed interior enhancements for NAIA Terminal 2. As you can see, these renders reflect the Filipino brand through highlighting organic and native designs made of locally sourced materials. 
We hope to be able to implement these changes soon and unveil a much improved airport, hopefully by the end of the year. Also important to the tourism experience, of course, is the aspect of peace and order. It's very important for us to ensure the safety and security of our travelers and tourism workers. And therefore, we have already coordinated with the Department of Interior and Local Government to continue the presence of our tourist police under the Top Cup program. We have also already begun coordination with the DLLG for the continued training of these Top Cups and to request that the tour of duty of the members of the PNP be lengthened so that their training will not be wasted and that they can have a longer time staying in key destinations. We have also looked at increasing the presence of these auxiliary forces in our key destinations, namely Barangay Panods, by linking our top cops with our LGUs. Furthermore, we have met with officials of the Department of National Defense to push for the full opening of tourism in Mindanao and to spur economic growth across its regions. This is part of the president's vision to ensure that no tourist destination gets left behind in the process of development. Currently, a draft memorandum of agreement between the DOT and the DND is being reviewed to strengthen our collaborative efforts towards peace and security as well as tourism. I'm also pleased to share with this honorable committee that tomorrow we are breaking ground on the establishment of tourist rest areas that will have clean and decent restrooms, tourist information areas, and a uh, provision for pasalubongs that where you can buy local de delicacies. Uh, tomorrow, your Honor, I am going to Manolo Fortich in Bukidnon, be breaking ground on one, as well as Samal Island in Davao, to be followed by uh, the north of Cebu, as well as the south of Cebu, and to include as well Bohol, uh, Baguio, as well as uh, Iocos. Please invite us to one of those when you have it running. We will be yes, curious course. about it. We would be very happy to and invite you. Job. It's Your Honor. really long warranted. Sex siguro later, pagdating dun sa TESA budget. Can we just get an update? Because if I remember it correctly, para every year may program yung, di ba may existing program na yung TESA na magtatayo kayo ng ganitong center? Actually, dun nga, if I, di ba yung dating design nyo pa may kasama na atang police outpost or... A restroom. Siguro kayo just get an update kung ilan na yung nagawa nyo. <laughs> yung security, di ba? Parang isang, parang isang complex na sila. Siguro kayo just get an update later kung ilan na yung nagawa nyo. Madam Chair, if I may clarify, uh, this project we are doing is in coordination with the Tiaza as well as the LGUs. Presently, considering the limitations of our budget for this year, we tap the TIAZA as a source of funding, as well as the LGU as a source of uh, the property where this will be uh, put up. For my uh, discussions with TIAZA, they had indeed previously put up restrooms in certain areas across the country. But what we did was to enhance the design of these restrooms to make it more functional and to include other purposes that would be relevant to make the tourist experience more convenient. In addition to the safety and security of our tourists, it is also important to ensure their health. And therefore, we have conducted a due diligence among all the key destinations all over the country to identify which areas presently have health facilities, whether it's a tertiary hospital, a clinic, or a barangay health center, which simply do not have any. And now that we have this list, we're going to be working with the Department of Health and the LGUs for the purpose of ensuring that we make emergency health services available in these key destinations. Um, 
Madam Secretary. Sorry, Actually, I'm before very... that, yeah. I forgot to recognize Senator Poe. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Um, I recognize myself. No. But, but uh, actually, ma'am, thank you for initiating this. Kasi we've heard of, uh, di ba may story noon si Karen Davila, yung anak niya, hindi man lang daw alam i-treat. Of course, she was bashed for it, no? Uh, when, when she complained. But that's a reality. Another thing is there are people, especially if we have foreigners that come here, that can encounter allergies. And, and this is really important. I really think that those, even if they're a tertiary hospital or a small clinic, they should have epinephrine or ano ba yun? parang steroid yun eh. Para yung mga biglang ano, defibrillator, yun, medyo mahal pa yun. But yung basic na gano'n, na talagang few minutes would matter. So yun lang. I think it's not too expensive naman to have that. So that's all, ma'am. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for those very valuable suggestions. And we will certainly include that in uh, our discussions with the DOH. In addition to this, I'm pleased to inform you that uh, we have directed our attached agency, PCSSD, to come up with a map to ensure that uh, all over the country we are able to map out, together with the Piazza, the availability of uh, facilities specifically for our divers who might encounter bends after diving. And... Uh, this will include uh, the improvement of uh, present facilities concerning um, the diving uh, chamber hyperbaric the hyperbaric chambers. So we currently have hyperbaric chambers all over the country. However, many of these are no longer functional. So we've also conducting a similar due diligence to study which ones we should reactivate. In which areas we should which areas we should add more chambers secretary can you submit to the committee um so technically meron pala kayong hindi na nagfa-function na hyperbaric on top of dun sa mga dive locations na never nagkaroon ng hyperbaric yes madam chair we'd be happy to submit that uh, that is uh, data that is available from the tiaza as well as the pcssd the third aspect of our strategy is equality. This is aimed at the equalization of the overall tourism product development and promotion. We want to be able to maximize domestic tourism, and we will make certain that no tourist destination gets left behind in the process of development. We will expand our tourism products and harness the potential of tourism areas, promotion, and marketing opportunities to the destinations across the country. Our directive has been to extend full support to the local government units across the country in terms of promoting and developing our hidden gems, especially those that have needed attention but have not necessarily received the same. We're doing this in partnership with our partner agency, Tourism Promotions Board. We recognize our local government units role in attaining sustainable tourism. And therefore, we will strengthen our efforts in building capacities of our LGUs by rolling out product development manuals and training modules to the LGUs. This strong collaboration between the DOT and LGUs will enable us to ensure the success of the establishment of our tourism circuits, as well as the development of other tourism destinations currently in the pipeline. I'm also pleased to inform this honorable committee that we are launching a heritage, culture, and arts caravan nationwide. This will be launched this month. Essentially, what the Department of Tourism will do is to visit our LGUs all over the country, provide them with the product development manual, to give them the guidance and expertise of the DOT in the development, preservation, and promotion of their key destinations. As far as packaging the promotion of the destinations, we're also partnering with the TPB for this purpose. We will see to it. The quality of our tourist destinations and 
product offerings meet international standards through rigorous establishment of our accreditation and product audits. Currently, our Office for Standards Regulation is reviewing our accreditation standards to address gaps, improve it to present-day circumstances, and incorporate emerging tourism standards that cater to the needs of modern travelers. As well, we are upgrading our accreditation standards to include an incentive system for establishments across the country that specifically promote the Filipino brand. As part of our efforts to focus on maximizing domestic tourism, we will offer more choices not only to foreign tourists but also to our fellow Filipinos to entice them to explore the many beautiful places across the country. The department is working on developing new regional tourism circuits that will highlight nature-based tourism, food and gastronomy, heritage and culture, farm and agritourism, health and wellness, film tourism, as well as the arts. In line with this, we will be picking up more cultural and heritage hubs. Our country is rich in history, tradition, and culture, and it is high time that we pour more of our attention in capitalizing on these strengths of our identity. We also see opportunities for innovative tourism services, such as hop-on and hop-off buses across key destinations, as well as local and international river cruises. All these tourist destinations will get equal attention and support as we expand ourselves from our traditional portfolio to explore multidimensional tourism. With regard to the contribution of the tourism industry to employment in our country, it is undeniable that because of the pandemic, there has been a workforce shortage in our accommodation sector on one hand, as well as a massive loss of employment on the other hand. And therefore, to be able to address this challenge, I'm pleased to report to the Senate that last month we launched the department with the Department of Labor and Employment, the Trabajo Turismo Censo, Philippine Job Fair, which opened not less than 9,000 jobs across Metro Manila, Cebu, and Davao. This is in view of bridging the gap between the shortage of workforce in the accommodation sector as well as the huge demand for tourism employment, especially in those that have been displaced by the pandemic and those who wish to pursue a career in tourism. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, with your kind indulgence, may I kindly request the Secretariat to check on the audio so you have to address the echo, please. Thank you. Can you please check? My right, yes. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're prioritizing the provision of employment opportunities in the tourism and hospitality sector in response to the severe losses in income and livelihood due to the pandemic. As of October 3, if I may correct myself, there were 8,000, not 9,000. There were over 8,000 job vacancies recorded 157 establishments across the three major locations where we held our Trabajo, Turismo, and Ascenso job fair. There were 5,094 pre-registrants and 3,932 walk-ins. Applicants found to be initially qualified but needing further assessment totaled to 8,305. Meanwhile, 530 were referred to TESDA for further, further training. In my discussions with the Secretary of the Dole, Secretary Laguesma, he had said that uh, there was a workforce shortage in the tourism industry of over 12,000 jobs. And considering that over 8,000 jobs were offered in the Trabajo Turismo Ascenso job fair, then we are well on our way addressing this workforce shortage. 
Since this will be a multi-month campaign that we will be conducting until the anniversary of the Department of Tourism next year, we hope to be able to fully address the 12,000 job fair shortage by next year. Lastly, we are launching this year the Besita Be My Guest program, which is a guest incentive program for our overseas Filipino workers and fellow Filipinos living abroad would invite friends and family as well as foreigners to come visit the Philippines. This is a partnership with the Department of Migrant Workers and other related agencies. To clarify, this is not the new tagline or branding campaign of the Philippines, but rather a guest incentive program to help other OFWs. Um, Madam Secretary, can you expound on that? I find it uh, very interesting. So, Visita Be My Guest, is that going to be an app that uh, features certain places in the Philippines? How, how does this work and what incentives are you giving? Yes, I'd be very happy to expound on this program, Your Honor. The Visita Be My Guest program will offer, first, raffle prizes for OFWs and Filipinos residing abroad who would bring a guest to Philippines. Second, it would also offer a travel passport that you can use as you go around the country and which you can have stamped in certain key establishments. The more stamps that you get, the more chances of receiving incentives and prizes at the airport before you go back to your country of origin. Third, it will also provide our OFWs and visiting Filipinos with a privilege discount card. We are partnering with several establishments across the country, wherein upon presentation of the card, you would be able to avail of discounts in transport as well as accommodation and other related sectors. Oh, but how is it, uh, ma'am? Like, for example... How will they know about it? Is it an app? Na, na... There will be an app that would be provided for the convenience of uh, those that would avail of this program. Otherwise, yes. how do you access it? How do, you, how do they know about it? Is it in the DOT website? Uh, how, how is it? Yes, we're actually uh, designing a full on marketing and a marketing campaign specifically for the Besita Be My Guest. And you will also be with our tour operators, travel agencies, uh, as well as uh, other partners to be able to fully uh, inform the public about this. And considering that we are partnering with the uh, Department of Migrant Workers, specifically Secretary Toots Ople, who was kind enough to present this idea to us, uh, for us to assist as far as developing this program is concerned, uh, we are confident that we would be able to uh, disseminate the information, especially to our OFWs, through the Department of Migrant Workers. Yeah, because even if I'm trying, like, if I want to invite, uh, entice somebody to come to the Philippines, there has to be, like, a place, uh, maybe an app that they can look at where the beaches are, where the, you know, and what, you know, like simple, it's hard there. Eh? Because we do it ourselves. We cut and paste photos and then we show them these are the places. So maybe one portal that they can look at. I, thank you. Actually, Secretary, um, well, technically, this is not really a new project of the DOT. Uh, sino bang pinakamatanda na dito sa DOT? Si Yusek Shaba. Because, <laughs> um, di ba, I think this was started by Secretary Gabor. Tama ba? Um, I think that uh, please confirm siya ikaw na nga ata yung pinaka matagal sa DOT uh, well I was uh, not, not uh, what's this I'm not, I'm not privy uh, ma Madam Chair but uh, <laughs> yeah, si may mas matanda pa ba o si, si Asik Andrada ata yung mas matanda I think yes uh, Madam Chair there's a previous early in the 70s pa uh, mini uh, Secretary Aspiras started the Balibayan program po. Then it evolved to bring home my friend. And now... And then, uh, in fact, if um, I think yung time ni Sec Berna, bring home a friend ba yung ginamit niyang... I think, ma'am, uh, Sec Wanda po. Bring Tapos tinuloy ni Sec Berna. Hindi na po. Hindi ba niya tinuloy yun? Yung... Cause, 
Di ba parang may ano din yan eh, may raffle, may... Secretary Wanda Teo po. Okay, Secretary Wanda. So, how will this be different from those programs? Because, babalikan ko lang ulit, parang, apart, kasi parang lumalabas wala tayong consistency dun sa program. So, kunyari, for example, iko kung ikaw yung OFW, parang um, yung walang continuity, uh, parang we keep on changing the name but technically it's still the same project it's still the same concept which technically is bring home a friend wherein convince natin yung mga OFWs natin abroad na siguro yung mga amo nyo or yung mga kaibigan yung foreigners yayain yung bumisita sa Pilipinas which I mean that is the concept right of bisita be my guest Madam Chair you are absolutely correct that this program had been previously implemented in previous administrations, however, it was discontinued in the immediately preceding administration. How this particular project is different from how it was implemented previously is that we've brought it to the digital age. By introducing a digital transformation as far as the convenience of accessing it, the travel passport that you can actually use your mobile cell phone to use, uh, as well as uh, the privilege discount card, which can be on your phone and can be used up in, uh, in uh, establishments across the country. This is also being done presently uh, in partnership with uh, the new Department, Department of Migrant Services. So, lang, Secretary, baka maganda, kasi usually may pre-departure seminar to mga OFWs natin. Baka from there pa lang, convince natin sila i-download tong app na to before they fly out. Yes. Thank you. That's a very good suggestion, Madam Chair. Para stay safe. Oh, pero yun nga. Well, actually, dapat nga yung One Health Pass. Tigilan na natin yung One Health Pass. Would you like me to expound on what we've been doing with regard to the One Health Pass, Madam Chair? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, please. I almost didn't make my flight in Milan because of that. Umutiga na siyang hindi makakasama sa Pilipinas. Well, uh, I join the honorable members of the committee in uh, the pains that uh, have been experienced by our fellow Filipinos in accessing as well as utilizing the One Health Pass. And uh, in fact, in my presentation uh, to the president very early on in his administration, um, one of my first suggestions was specifically the removal of the One Health Pass. But recognizing that uh, this is a program that's presently being implemented by the Bureau of Quarantine as well as the Department of Health, we uh, engaged in conversation with them, and the conversation is continuing as far as, first, removing all of the redundant and unnecessary questions in the One Health Pass. Second, removing the red letter warnings that confront and threaten you with criminal liability the moment that you open the One Health Pass, because this is very prohibitive as far as international tourists are concerned. Third, improving the state aesthetics of the One Health Pass. Fourth, and finally, it is within present discussions of our fellow agencies to transform the One Health Pass into a, a, a facility that would become an electronic arrival and departure so rather than uh, it being a One Health Pass, it would mimic uh, the e-arrival pass of countries such as Singapore, which have uh, very successfully transformed their contact tracing uh, passes, similar to the One Health Pass, into this e-arrival pass. So the idea being to make it as convenient as possible for a passenger to come to the Philippines and without making the One Health Pass a prerequisite to your journey. Uh, there is value, though, in maintaining the minimum information that is requested in, this, uh, in the e-arrival 
tasks that we will eventually be transforming the One Health Pass to, such as, of course, your basic information, the places that you would eventually go to as you are in the Philippines, as this greatly helps us in the Department of Tourism, as well as it greatly helps uh, both the BOQ and the Bureau of Immigration in uh, monitoring the arrivals into the Philippines. And this would uh, inform our tourism statistics and allow us to have real-time information on arrivals into the Philippines. But maybe the sectors be conscious ah, on the provisions of data privacy because I don't know if you can have access to that data. Madam Chair, in addition to the DOH, the BOQ, and the BI, the effort will also be done in coordination with the DICT to ensure full compliance with the data privacy law and to ensure that the information being given by the passenger is voluntary and that he fully agrees to the access that the government will have. No privacy commission. Noted on that, Madam Chair. Then, but more than that, going back to the One Health Pass, it's not a sense because, right, you know, come to think of it, like, for example, in other countries, Ah, uh, ang taas na ng vaccination rate nila, pati yung booster nila. Tapos nire-require pa natin silang uh, mag-submit ng One Health Pass while us, na mababa yung vaccination rate natin saka booster rate natin, hindi nila tayo nire-require mag-register sa kanila. So parang, yun lang, parang walang law, does not follow logic. I'm in complete agreement, Madam Chair. Which is why uh, we are happy as well that the DOH, the BOQ, and the BI are open, and are open for revising. Pangit din yung itsura sa airport na may mga ganong... Because it doesn't look... It doesn't look inviting na pagland mo sa airport. May mga ganong cubicles na hindi pa maganda yung pagkaayos. Kasi parang nag-ano lang sila ng plywood na nilagyan nila ng harang. And it's also to, to add, it's also intimidating because it's manned by Coast Guard yes. personnel. Yes. So, parang ano tayo, di ba? Uh, authoritarian state or whatever. Mm -hmm. ano. Yes. And I think it's redundant because there's already the vac, vac certificate. Eh. Yes. That's the only thing that you need to enter. In, in fact, when I went to Europe just uh, recently, they didn't even ask anymore just a vac certificate. So here, may vac certificate na din may one health pass pa. So, it's redundant. So, Thank you, Your Honor. In fact, sa UK, um, hindi na nga din mandatory for you to submit whether um, vaccinated ka o hindi. Parang hindi na, hindi na siya requirement. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the effort from the end of the DOT has been to engage in conversation with our various government agencies because uh, the uh, idea is that we should be able to convey an openness and a readiness to receive international tourists in the Philippines. And therefore, a liberalization of these protocols that were put in place at the height of the pandemic is uh, the direction that the DOT wishes to take uh, in collaboration with our partner agencies. And the timeline for this, as directed by the president, is that uh, we should be able to rationalize and liberalize the remainder of these policies by the end of the year in anticipation for the mass arrivals in uh, November and December. With regard to our policy recommendations, we hope to be able to establish the tourism infrastructure development fund, as well as the inclusion of a contingency fund for immediate response to calamities and disasters affecting the tourism industry. As I will elucidate in the remainder of my presentation, Madam Chair, the Department of Tourism presently has no budget for infrastructure or capital outlay, nor does it have any budget at all for contingencies should emergencies or disasters arise, especially in relation to our tourism establishments and tourism frontliners. For us to accomplish all that we hope to do, we're banking on the support of this esteemed committee. And with that, allow me to present the DOT's proposed budget for the next fiscal year. The Department of Tourism, composed of the Office of the Secretary, 
Intramuros Administration, the National Parks Development Committee, and the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving is proposing a budget of 3.573 billion pesos. Noticeably, we are purely PS and MOOE, and as mentioned earlier, we have no budget for capital outlay. The proposed budget of 3.295 billion for the Office of the Secretary in 2023 will account for 92.26 of the total expenditure program. Both the proposed budget of the IA and NPDC will remain almost the same compared to their 2022 levels. This is the first time that the PSSD, PCSSD will have its own budget as an attached agency of the DOT in view of the Tourism Act of 2009. The DOT Office of the Secretary has consistently worked towards fully utilizing its budget in order to achieve the objectives of its programs, activities, and projects. As with previous years, our utilization typically accelerates towards the latter half of the year, as most of its big-ticket projects are scheduled to be implemented in the second semester. When I assumed office, the utilization rate of the DOT was at 34% of its budget the end of 20 June 2022. We then conducted a due diligence on the current programs and activities of the department, as well as identified areas for improvement with respect to financial controls. We're actively working on this as we speak. Rest assured that in line with the president's pronouncements and visions of revitalizing the tourism industry, we will be able to utilize our appropriations but of the year, as well as include our new approaches to existing programs. The breakdown of the DOT Office of Secretary covers the ongoing activities, programs, and projects, as well as other operational expenses. The Market and Product Development Program will get $1.891 billion. It will be followed by the program expenditure classification with programs under the operations classified into four namely tourism policy formulation and planning, tourism industry training, standards development and enforcement program, and market and product development. Budget for the market and product development will have a share of 85% of the total MOE. For tourism policy formulation planning and tourism industry training, we have 6% each. Among the four programs of the DOT OSEC, the biggest share allocated to the region is the budget for tourism industry training, and the central office allocation to the program is sub allotted to the regions for allocation as well. With regard to the Intramuros administration, it is proposing a budget of 63.93 million pesos to be able to discharge its mandate. This budget is very similar to its budget in 2022. Any increase in line items can be attributed to inflation rates. Honorable members, the Intramuros administration, as well as the NPDC and the PCSSD, have individually prepared and are present at the moment should you wish to see further details of their budget proposals. With regard to the NPDC, it is proposing a budget of 200 0.6 million pesos. Lastly, the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving has a budget of 9.53 million pesos. As mentioned, this is the first time that the PCSSD will have its own budget. It is currently transitioning as an attached agency, and we recognize the importance of diving as one of the major products of the Philippines. COVID-19 has proven to be our litmus test. It tested our mettle as individuals, our agility as an industry, our resolve as, sustainable, as a sustainable sector, and as well as our empathy as members of society. But I could have just stayed in my beloved town of Liloan. As mayor, I accepted the tourism portfolio with high hopes that since the president has identified the tourism industry as one of the top priorities of his administration, this optimism has reverberated across all sectors of the tourism industry. And therefore, I come before you today with high hopes as well. With the support of the Senate, the tourism department will receive the budget that it needs to fulfill 
the vision of the president and the programs that we have prepared. The amount that you will be granting to us will directly redound to the benefit of millions of Filipinos in terms of new employment, new businesses, a recovery of lost livelihood and lost economic opportunities. In our road towards recovery, we will continue to face many challenges with the support of the Honorable Senate. I know that we can and we will rebuild a more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable tourism industry. After all, tourism is our shared responsibility, and the success of the Department of Tourism is your success. It is our country's success. And with this, esteemed members, I thank you all for your time, and I'm prepared to address any and all of your questions. Dagang salamat. Dagang salamat, Secretary Fasco. I would like to call on um, Senator Poe for her questions. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Secretary Fasco. Uh, your proposals is, uh, are very proactive, and I see the way you present is like, we will already be groundbreaking by tomorrow. Parang mabilis yung action. Uh, very organized. I'm also very happy that a friend of mine, um, ano bang title mo? CO, COO, COO Marga Nograles is in the Tourism, Tourism Promotions Board. Importante kasi yung promotion talaga eh. And we've seen how she was able to promote her own uh, business into uh, an enterprise that most of us actually have uh, her, her creation. And I think that you will have to be able to scale it up to a, a bigger level. Now, the, the tourism industry supposedly uh, contributes about 2.48 trillion pesos to our GDP. So that is 12.8% total of our economy. That, that's quite a substantial number. And yet the budget that you're asking is quite minuscule. I think maybe not now, but moving forward, I think that you should get a bigger share of the budget because we're trying to compare ourselves to Thailand and all these countries. And the, the share of, I, I remember you mentioned, the share of the budget of tourism is much larger uh, in proportion to what we're giving our tourism um, agency. Now, uh, one small thing, the digital nomads, okay? Uh, it's a growing community or it's a, a big community in, in Bali, Indonesia, some parts of Thailand. Uh, maybe in the meantime, since you have very limited funds, if you can partner up with our telcos, if you identify areas that are... Uh, uh, accommodating to these types of communities, if they can please boost the signal at least in those areas. Like I know Shargao, a lot, a lot of places there, even in the cafes, to, to promote their, their, their uh, company. But since we can't do it ourselves because our infrastructure is not as uh, quick, we don't have the national broadband plan yet, partner up with Globe and Smart, identify those areas where we can promote digital nomad communities. Um, and then, of course, for, for film tourism, I, I, I hope we can work together to come up with a brochure. Uh, it can be online. It, it can be digital brochure, or it, but also with a physical um, book that we can distribute. So that's all, Madam Chair. Um, again, uh, thank you, and hopefully by next year, we can increase your budget, if not now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, Senator, Senator Poe. Siguro just to share lang, because techni um, technically there's a tourism convergence budget, and that is worth $26 billion. So for example, sa DPWH, there's $15 billion oh. um, to be used for um, yung trip si yung, um, ano yan? Tourism... Uh, Tourism, yung roads leading to tourist destinations. Ah, okay, okay. So, parang hindi lang, well, maliit pa din yung budget nila. But um, there's like 26 billion lodged in other agencies for the industry. Sabuli niyo yun, tsaka tutukan niyo, kasi baka kung saan lang mapunta. Yes. Eh, no? uh, Madam Chair, if, if I may address uh, the comments of uh, Senator Po and your comments as well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor, for uh, complementing the work that's so far been uh, implemented by the Department of Tourism in collaboration with our partner agencies. 
I come from local government where we saw firsthand the grave effects of the pandemic. And by the tail end of 2021, when we were at the cusp of recovery, Cebu was ravaged by Super Typhoon Odette. And so my perspective has been one of crisis. Within, without a sense of urgency, one more person will suffer among the millions that have already suffered from everything that we have faced. It is the sense of urgency that drives me and my fellow officials of the DOT and the attached agencies with which we approach the tourism industry at this juncture. That having been said, absolutely correct that uh, it is our earnest desire to have a bigger budget that is uh, equal, if not larger than the expectations that are lodged upon the department as far as carrying the weight of recovery of our country. Notwithstanding the fact that at its height, the uh, tourism industry contributed, as you mentioned, up to 2.5 million 2.5 trillion pesos to our economy, or over 12% of our GDP. At its average, the Department of Tourism has received less than 1% of the general appropriations. As a matter of fact, presently, it accounts for only 0.063% of the entire national budget. And it ranks number 17 out of the 23 departments of the national government. That being said, since we are always uh, compared with our ASEAN neighbors as far as international arrivals and the successes of tourism departments and ministries are concerned, I would like to share with this honorable committee that based on available data for the year 2022 from our study of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines, these uh, countries, with the exception of the Philippines, share 40% of the total budget within their respective countries. Singapore recorded the second biggest tourism budget, 376, 376 million dollars. The Philippines rather registered the lowest as far as tourism budget is concerned. With this data, Madam Chair, we can deduce that uh, the amount of budget of the ministries of tourism in our neighboring countries is directly proportionate to the measures of their success. The more budget they have, the more successful they have also been. And uh, it is precisely the reason why we're hopeful for the support of uh, the Senate as far as uh, the budget of the DOT is concerned. Uh, Madam Secretary, so how much is the actual income from uh, tourism? I mean, not to the GDP, I, the, the actual that can be attributed. Was it like mga $5 billion? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, statistically, Madam Chair, uh, while they are getting the actual numbers, for every one peso that is spent on tourism, there is a return of over 800 pesos in the Philippines. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, maybe now that you're the secretary, um, our fellow colleagues in Congress will be more confident in adding uh, more budget. But, um, I, well, thank you again for answering my queries and, and good luck to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank for you. support. Thank you. I would like to recognize our Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I'm not, uh, uh, I know it's not my term yet. I just wanted to say hi to my good friends here, Senator Mark Lapid Dulay, tsaka si Margo, tsaka <laughs> of course si Secretary, pagandang uh, umag-tanghali na po sa inyo. San Grace? San Grace, where are you going, San Grace? <laughs> so I'm here to uh, give my support and uh, perhaps just just ask some few questions, Madam Chair. I'll I'll wait later, Mr. Chair. Please. 
recognize um, the good one. <laughs> Madam Chair, Xavier, in, uh, in line. <laughs> Madam Chair, in line with that, yung that was uh, discussed, what was uh, recently, yung pong ano yung sinabi niyo pong, uh, Madam Secretary, yung pong budget no, of the other ASEAN nations, no, medyo, ano, curious ako, how much are they spending like Malaysia, Thailand, uh, because these are the top, ano eh, Vietnam, also Vietnam, because these are uh, the top destinations right now. And uh, like Thailand is getting about 9 million tourists, about tayo, 2 million, karam karam yung padun is balik bayan. So, in the way the market, for example, Malaysia, um, I think the Philippines is much, much, mas maganda tayo dun. We are much beautiful, um, we are very beautiful uh, areas, beaches, than Malaysia, but the way they marketed it, grabe, no? In CNN, everybody watch, yung Mal Malaysia truly Asia, very catchy, but na parang I'm just curious how much the budget is, kasi it's really, ano, you can see it very frequent, no? In, uh, in any program. We do have that data, Your Honor. With regard to Indonesia, it has a budget of 645 million US dollars. With regard to Malaysia, its budget is 358 million US dollars. With regard to Singapore, as mentioned earlier, it's 376 million US dollars. Thailand has 111 million US dollars, whereas the Philippines has 49 million US dollars. So that probably explains uh, the way they market um, the countries. No, it's a. Uh, it's really advertising it all over the world, no? uh, but given the meager budget that we have, I think we can still improve a lot. That's why we asked so that, you know, hopefully we can improve later on because the multiplier effect of uh, the tourism industry is really enormous no? compared to others. No? For every, for every $100 that is brought in, probably $80 remains here or even $90. So we rest assured ma, ma, uh, Madam Secretary, that uh, we are all here. Um, we really think that tourism is the low hanging fruit in uh, in uh, the industries that can really help us get back to our feet. But we just have to make some fine tuning in other areas. But I'm sure if, if I may ask some questions, um, po lang so, no, no? Si Sir Abuti, uh, it's good thing as uh, GM Mark Lapid is here no? because he's a TSA. Because I find it, sayang po yano eh. I, this is the arm of DOT that is uh, tasked to uh, put up the infrastructure, no? like uh, tourism areas, tourism uh, uh, centers, um, comfort rooms, uh, uh, hotels. No? You've been man you're managing also, uh, some hotels. But what I noticed, Madam Chair, because I, I was in Congress also, I was on the Senate, is that the budget of TSA, instead of concentra being concentrated on the key tourism areas of the country parang ma, ano, uh, it's been divided no? merong wala nga na but observation lang there are some areas in the country there are provinces that have tourism very very big tourism centers but they are not tourism areas may mga agri more of agri <laughs> agri, uh, agri areas and others parang Yun lang yun napansin ko, no? I'm hoping also that um, our friends from the house, no, galing din naman ako sa house, that they will also support that yung TSA will just concentrate, concentrate, we can concentrate on areas that we can really promote. Lalagang dapat world class yung pinapromote natin so that we can keep up with uh, with other uh, with other countries like, for example, Thailand. Of course, Bangkok, Pattaya, uh, with Malaysia, uh, KL, Kota Kinabalu, yun lang ano eh. So, yun lang. Um, siguro like in uh, what I, yung, there are areas also, uh, yung mga, yung mga uh, hotels uh, that are, ano pa ba yan? Jemark, uh, what are the hotels that are being maintained by uh, TSA as of, at, at present? Siguro, uh, uh, GM, before you answer yung tanong ni Sen JV, can you just please state for the record, how much is your budget for next year? Corporate operating budget for next year is around 2.986 uh, 
333 billion pesos madam chair yeah and out of that ma'am is uh, 746 226 will be for our infrastructure what's how much is for infa again 746 226 let me search here and, and then sa tanong ni senator jay yes and to address uh, the question of uh, our honorable chair uh, we have a banawe youth and hostel we have we just recently opened reopened the mount data we have uh, the balikasag um, island dive resort we have uh, gardens of malasag and then we have two golf courses also which is intramuros and the Sambuanga Golf Course. But I mean, later, yung, yung Makai sa MacArthur. MacArthur Park is already been turned over to the uh -huh. LGU, Mr. Chair. So, yeah, LGU na siya? LGU. Province or? Yes, uh, province po. Sa province what po was chair. the reason? But, uh, it, was, it was requested by the province during the time of uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and we were directed by the Malak Office of the President to turn it over to the province because uh, they propose that uh, they have a private partner who will invest. So, yun uh, huwag naging kwento nun, Mr. Chair. Yes, because from what I uh, remember, it was uh, it used to be PTA before. No? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, but was my first, ano, my first uh, um, query about the post concentration of the projects of yes. ESA. Can we, would you like to comment, uh, GM, uh, uh, ano pong ano niya, yun na, Hindi ko lang kasi na sumasabog eh. Sayang in the area of fast concentrating on, uh, on the major tourism areas. Mr. Chair, that, that's one of the main uh, uh, discussion that and direction that we discussed with uh, our secretary. Uh, and that's the direction that she wants to focus on sustainable projects also. Uh, this uh, already existing uh, tourist destination. That's why we also ask the guidance coming from the Office of the President also through our Secretary and through DBM. Because we were asked last year to diversionize because of the Mandana's ruling. Then sa Mandana's ruling po, it is clearly specified that we will be only focusing or helping the 5th and 6th class municipalities. As well as contrary to the, the destination po, the already highly urbanized city or first class municipality. Eh, ang sabihin mo natin, like Boracay, like, uh, like uh, Bungel, Panglao, uh, Cebu, kailangan pa rin po naman ng infrastructure support. So kung babaklas po kami, so we're asking for clearance talaga kung paano po yun, Mr. Chair. Yes, I, uh, Madam Chair, I would like to uh, recognize our Senate Pro Temp, the Tita Ganda of the Senate, Senator Lauren De Garda. Hey, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry I'm late because I came from the NEDA, no, the DBM uh, finance hearing. Yes, of course, I'm just here to listen and to extend my full support. And I see our familiar faces and dear friends, of course. <laughs> Yeah, Mark is here. Very good. Uh, TPB. <laughs> and then, of course, Mark Tiesa and my dear Ina Anak. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> I'm just here to listen. Yes, and support. Uh -uh. Please continue. So going back to like, siguro, I, uh, Madam Secretary and uh, siguro GM, I think we have to uh, concentrate on the high-impact projects. Kasi parang sayang naman, if we will just a lot of tourism centers that are located in areas that are not really tourism areas. No? Um, probably you can talk to speaker about it. So, para hindi paghati-hatian yung budget ng, ng uh, TSA because I have uh, noticed this long before. For example, um, of course, Bohol, Panglao, kailangan pa rin natin yan. Bakal, those are me, our main sellers. Um, and then, among others, so of course, we have to improve the facilities as mentioned by um, the Secretary. Dapat talaga yung mga comfort rooms, make it comfortable. Tourism areas complete. I, 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 it's really exciting now what uh, you presented and I really, really support that uh, by putting up those tourism centers in areas that are really 
we can really sell. Yung talagang magaganda. We have a lot of nice places. Pero wag naman sanang mahati yung nasasayangan ako. Alam niyo siguro yung ibig sabihin GM eh. No? Na hindi pang hati-hatian in areas so you put up tourism facilities in areas that are not really suited for tourism. Sayang. So, probably with, the, with that direction, probably with the help of the... Uh, with the president and the speaker probably uh, probably can already concentrate the high impact projects uh, of uh, Fertiesa. Actually, hindi, send JV. Question lang, kasi you know for a fact that you're a biker, dun sa lugar kung saan ka nagbabike, meron bang uh, yun mga, mga comfort room or may ganong facilities ba? Well, I've seen in Bohol, no, sa Panglao area, sa Bohol, sa Chocolate Hills, meron namang facilities ang uh, Tiesa, uh, projects sa uh, comfort rooms. But uh, there are still certain areas na medyo kulang, no, I think. No? Uh, ang nanginaya po ko, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, I'll go back na naman na mention yung Banawe Terraces Hotel. I think that's also maintained by uh, Tiesa. And recently, I'm happy. And I'm happy that uh, you already opened Mount Data because for me personally, as a rider, as a biker, that's one of the most beautiful places that I have re really visited. Yung Banawe, uh, before going to uh, Sagada in Mountain Province. But yun nga lang, I, I feel bad kasi hindi na... Um, the Banawe Rice Terraces Hotel, ang, ang ano doon, ang mga... Uh, the fixtures, bathroom fixtures was yung mga baby... Blue pa, pink, parang 70s, 80s era pa to, Marcos era pa ito eh. If I'm not mistaken, yung talagang, ano, yung lumang-lumang style. But, you know, for me personally, Banawe is our gem. It's, uh, it's even considered as the eighth wonder of the world. I discussed this in the floor with Senator Loredo um, about the, how we, ito yung madapat natin mo ni Mike, and I put projects there. And also, if probably we can, look at the possibility kasi may, ang nakakasira doon yung mga shanties no? uh, panay GI sheets na um, there's, a, ano, there's a material now that yung parang para siyang uh, o oh, para siyang uh, but it's not ano, alam ni Zen ni Governor John Vick Rimuya eh, you can ask him uh, but he used to sa kanyang meron siyang result um, but uh, that probably baka pwede natin uh, mag, we can probably invest so that we can maintain the heritage in the look uh, the areas around Banawe kasi ano it's an eyesore sayang ang ganda ng Banawe rice terraces it's really majestic and kaya lang if you see the shanties yung mga GI sheets nakakasira so baka pwede nyong look into the possibility so that we can maintain the look yung uh, hindi masira no yung uh, itsura ng uh, Banawi Rice there. so and also in yun nga uh, Madam Chair yung Banawi Rice Terraces Hotel and Mount Data I think we have to invest in those and uh, these are very beautiful places actually Jem yung Banawi um, parang ito was turned over sa LGU di ba? Uh, or, no Madam Chair sa sa parin po siya it is under as of last year under ng Joint Venture Selection Committee and then, uh, unfortunately, the pandemic, po, uh, I think uh, there are some investors who are looking into it na mag, uh, mag uh, invest and mag uh, manage ng Banawe Hostel. But we are just, in eyes lang po kasi namin yun, na may, we're just making sure na uh, whoever takes over the Banawe uh, Hotel, kasama ho yung mga empleyado because it is part, nakastate ho kasi dun sa title na nung dinonate yun, dapat kasama yung mga nag-donate including yung hanggang sa anak nila yung may-ari ng lupa to be hired as employee of the hotel so kasama ho yan but since wala pa rin pong private sector uh, we allocated uh, Mr. Chair ng, uh, since tinamaan ho siya nung, nung bagyo tinamaan ho siya nung lindol so the board to our secretary already allocated around mga uh, 50 million to rehabilitate then aside on top of that, yung pong rehabilitation ng the whole hotel itself, mga around nasa 80 million po yun. We are just waiting for the master plan to be finished na in-execute po namin last year. So kasi ang gusto ko ng board namin is to have the master plan be, be finished first before executing the implementing for all the rehabilitation. Kasi ang point ko na sinasabi ko rin sa board, uh, during way back in 2012, direction kasing binigay sa amin ng time na yun, hindi namin nire-rehabilitate, look for private, 
people with ties na yung mga property. So, ayaw mag-approve ng funding. Pero kasi ang argue ko ho doon, we're not going to rehabilitate these properties habang wala po, nade-delapidate po kasi itong mga property. At kung may private sector man nakukuha, bumababa po ang value ng mga properties natin. That's why, I think for maintenance purposes po talaga, the support of our secretaries there, so we will rehabilitate po starting within this year hanggang next year po. Anyway, ang, ang ano na lang natin, konti na lang natin, Mount Data, uh, Banawe, Terso, Sotel, ano pa yung minimintayin natin? Balikasag? Balikasag. And two golf um, courses, what are the two called golf courses? Uh, the two golf courses is the Intramuros yeah. and the Sambuanga City Golf Course. And those are, I think, the uh, self-sustaining naman ito mga ito, no? Yes po. Yes. So probably if we, if we were to concentrate the budget or infra projects, I think that would ina- be enough to rehabilitate all of these uh, hotel. No, kung hindi lang to kinagatin natin ano eh, ito yung makasya ito eh. Mr. Chair, kung talagang doon lang po namin ilalaan yung budget namin, within a year, kaya ho namin tapusin lahat ng properties namin. But unfortunately, that is not the case. And... We are very much happy to hear that you will discuss it with the speaker and the president also na baka pwede hong mag-focus because sometimes we say, Jay, sana maintindihan niyo rin po na pag sinasabi kasi ng lahat ng mga ibang public officials, they're all entitled to a tourism destination and tourism development. So we have to, ano po. Actually, that's okay naman I, because we have a lot of hidden treasures na naman eh, that we want to promote also. Not only the main, but mer- basta merong hidden mga mga magagandang areas that uh, I think that will be okay no? to put. And then, but, in fact, yung, ano, Madam Chair, the one that was presented by Secretary Frasco is really, really exciting. Ang gaganda ng mga tourism uh, centers that you have in mind. No? It's uh, really commendable. So that... Um, but I'm sure that you know, we will support. Kaya lang, inaano lang natin, sayang eh. No? I think this, we have to focus no? on areas first and then we uh, we follow it up with the, the new hidden treasures, the hidden, uh, yung mga new uh, discoveries. No? Um, siguro, doon na lang sa... Sige po. Go ahead. Sir JV, with your permission, may... Go ahead. I-share lang si... Thank you. Senator Lecce. No, in line with what Senator JV had mentioned, I support the initiative to improve the infrastructure in UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I did not see the presentation. I'm sure it was there. Uh, Banawe is just one of that because in the province of Ifugao, I believe there are five UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There's Nagadakan, uh, there's Mayoyao, there's uh, Batad, there's Bangaan, and one more, in Kiangan. Uh, who knows? Um, who's in charge of Region 1? There are five other five UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Banawe is just one of them. And our government infrastructure, our building, which I believe is rundown, must be rehabilitated because PTA, after all, has the funds, right? So we must um, maintain it. I know that it's an old, old building, but all this good, the new, the new good is an old one, right? Maybe it's already heritage under a Heritage Act for 50 years. So, uh, my dear Madam Secretary, I am certain, and I like your statement when you say that it will be LGU driven. Among the many statements, I'll take on my mask so you can see me smiling. Among the many statements that you've made, I like it when you said, because you're an expert in local governance and because you come from a province that really has, since your mother's time, I used to join her in Suri Suri in promoting the natural heritage of localities, whether cities or municipalities, hanggang sa liblib na lugar. So, whether it's in Cebu or in the Visayas, but this is in the Cordillera region, may I humbly suggest that all UNESCO World Heritage Sites uh, be promoted. We have the tourism and Promotions Bureau, uh, our, our dear Marga uh, joins us. Uh, we have the infrastructure arm, the PTA, and we have an LGU expert who knows uh, both culture and heritage and the importance of LGU-supported and LGU-driven uh, heritage sites. So even just focusing on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, that is not difficult, diba, Madam Chair, to sell Sinabi nga nyo, tama si Sam JV. Uh, UNESCO Heritage Site. Oh, it's not just one. There's five. Banawi pa lang yan. And 
Second, we can also focus on those declared by the National Museum and the National Commission on Culture and Arts, whether they are natural, national historical landmarks as declared by the National Historical Cultural Commission, the NHCP, or the NM, the National Cultural Treasures, and dami. So, hindi tayo na uubusan. Importante lang yung upkeep. But of course, you have a limited budget. And the budget is with ETA. Alam nyo, i-focus lang nyo kung anong meron ang nakatayo. Kasi build tayo ng build, tapos iiwanan after the administration kasi hindi priority. But why am I saying this? Because the easiest to sell, to market, to promote, will be those already known Filipinos and to overseas Filipinos and to tourists. When you say UNESCO, that's automatic, right? When you go to another country, uh, let's say in an ASEAN country like um, Vietnam, uh, I'm sure you've been to uh, ah, Hanung Bay in, in Vietnam. Let's say the, um, when, for example, to Luang Prabang, I've been there a couple of times in Laos. Uh, it's a restored French colonial town. Pag sinabi kasi, UNESCO, ang ganda, half the battle is won if you know it's been vetted and declared by UNESCO. So, I'm not certain if our team is prepared to explain to me all the initiatives for the UNESCO World Heritage Sites or even if you would have the list. And that would include, let's say, in my region, in our region, when you land in Iloilo Ilo Airport and all the way from you've San Joaquin, Meagao to Antique, there are several uh, churches, uh, Baroque churches, and then the Renon uh, church tours. Uh, it's a um, humble suggestion, Madam Chair, to include in your priorities uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites and, of course, the infrastructure going there and the accommodations nearby. And clean restrooms. I also commend uh, Madam Secretary, I think, was it you? that You mentioned that you wanted clean restrooms. That's very basic. And um, I think we can see the culture of a people. We see how clean we are and sanitary in the way we live and the way we conduct ourselves. So clean restrooms with running water because sometimes they build walang tubig, walang flush. I know this is so basic to be discussed in a committee hearing, but yes, it shows the mindfulness. Uh, magtatayo, walang toilet paper, walang trash bin, pundido yung ilaw, walang flush, mapanghi, Wag naman, hindi ba? So, LGU driven. Commend you for that. Sige. Bawat LGU, uh, gawin modelo. Ang uh, probinsya ng Cebu, nakita yung ginagawa. Hindi naman sila humingi noon ng pondo siguro sa PTA o sa TPB. Pero, nag-innovate yung governor, nagsuri-suri. Promoting na, na pumapunta pa ako sa isang bayan, waterfalls, gabi na yun. Ano ba yung pinakamagandang waterfalls na pinakamalinis na kawa, kawa, kawasan? Yes, kawasan falls. Ginabi na kami nun. Tapos, pinapahanda ng pagkain yung so culinary heritage, natural heritage, built heritage, and then the songs and dance. So, what am I trying to say? UNESCO World Heritage Sites, National Cultural Treasures, National Historical Landmarks, all of that, and then, of course, roads. Hindi na sa inyo yung pondong yan. DA at DPWH na yan. And then PTA has the money for the infrastructure. Motions, you have the funds for that. And we will also help you. So it's so easy to vote, promote clean restrooms and safety in those areas. And well-lighted plazas, perhaps. Uh, it would also be good. I know that the... Uh, PTA has a program for plazas. Who is this expert in plazas who always writes on it? Uh, who is an architect? No. Uh, architect. Yung kasama natin sa Dinis Biennale. Ah, Alcazarin. Architect Paolo Alcazarin is an expert in plazas. Uh, you, have a beautiful, you have beautiful plazas in Cebu. Kar -kar. And then the, you know, just even... Maglakad lang sa plazas, uh, 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 foot, foot tourism, uh, walking tours, ang gaganda ng ating mga plaza. Just dating those plazas. Imagine if you do an inventory of all plazas in the Philippines. 
Tapos we do walking tours. Like, asa ng taal. Ang ganda-ganda, maglaka doon, tapos puro uh, taal in Batangas. For example, uh, yung Makati Plaza, Mayor, ay ano, uh, Senator. Um, <laughs> diba? Future, oh, sa future, Bukawe. future. Sa Bukawe. Oh, oh. Um, let's say, I mentioned this because the program to put clean restrooms in the 18 plazas, in the 18 LGUs in my home province of Antique, which you can do in Bulacan, which you can do your plaza, that maganda sa San Juan. Huh? Mama Mayor? Yes. So, bakit ako parang excited? Kasi, I'm sure that our young and brilliant and talented, passionate ladies and men understand what I mean. I hope Secretary Frasco agrees, I'm sure she does, on promoting UNESCO sites and national cultural treasures and uh, using the Heritage Act, which Congress enacted, which the Senate enacted, we're all co-authors. Mm, and ganda ganda heritage tourism, ecotourism, and this definitely will be GU driven. So before I um, give the floor to back to our chair, I also give the suggestion. I know everybody may not, not everybody may agree, but language tours. You say, ano ba yan? We have over a hundred languages. Uh, uh, you know, coming collaboration with NCCA. Because I try to do that. Language tours. We have over a hundred languages in the Philippines. These languages emanate from different localities, communities, and we can even train echo guides to study where the languages came from, whether it's Cebuano or Kinaraya or Hiligaynon or Chabacano, and we install beautifully designed language markers which are being done by Jun Yi, who almost made it as national artist. I'm not sure if there is in the, yes, there is in Cebu, uh, there is in Batangas, language markers, beautiful, with by buying scripts. There's in Batangas, there's in Kiangan, it's uh, NCCA and um, KWF, uh, Wikang Filipino Project. But tourism, uh, you, you don't need funds. Um, you can just link up with the LGU and develop walking tours on how that language Evolved, was invented. Then, what are the houses there? Yuna, sa culinary, sa tangible heritage, dun lalabas. Suggestion lang naman, se ginawa rin naman yun. Ang tingin ko, that can bring about a pride of place. It can be um, a job during summer for our youths. Uh, it can even be a GIP. Damn, why am I doing this? We're doing convergence. Well, yeah, you raise it tomorrow. It can be a GIP. You know, we pay government internship program three months. Youths, para magkatrabaho to augment the income of their poor parents. Pwede yan, language tours on foot, uh, walking tours from the plaza, train sila. So, tourism ang taga-train. Don't worry, wala, na wala kayong pondo. Ang pondo na kalaan sa dole, GIP, which share we can earmark with the cooperation of the majority leader and the chair of the committee on finance and our chair also, Senator Ejercito. It can be a collaborative um, provision, special amendment that the GIP may be used for echo guides for out-of-school youths. It's just a suggestion, but I think uh, it's worth looking into. What do you think, Madam Secretary? Your Honor, I absolutely agree with every single word that you said. And uh, I, I'm so greedy. <laughs> I, I'm, I, uh, I, I, I really greatly appreciate the wealth of your experience and knowledge and the passion with which you have shared with all of the, us, all of these suggestions. We note all of it and we will make sure to incorporate each and every one of these to our programs for the coming year. I'm pleased to let you know that this month we are launching a heritage, culture, and arts caravan nationwide, uh, focusing on uh, the development 
of our LGUs as far as their destinations, as well as all the other aspects of their culture. As you know, uh, we did this in Cebu, which resulted in the Suri Suri Sugbo, and that is what we plan to replicate all over the country. Uh, great. If we could, rep no, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yes. The great governor, your dear mother, so brilliant, Suri Suri, years ago, Ginawaya, 15 years ago, replicate mo lang sa bawat probinsya, sa bawat syudad. Even Makati, Miss Mayor, um, incoming mayor, diyan, uh, magsuri-suri. Yes, uh, you can even link up, and I can help you, with NCCA because they do a dayaw every year. Dayaw ba ang tawag nila? Yes. Dayaw? Yes. They have, it's every, every year, every two years. Every year, NCCA has dayaw. And it's simple. It, it's similar to Suri Suri, yes, uh, which is also um, like a fiesta type and, and showing, showcasing the culinary heritage, the rituals, the dance, the song. Yes. So uh, I would be happy to see the four of us uh, can be invited, all of us uh, nearby on the launch of your uh, heritage uh, caravan. And we would like to see how you uh, are innovating it. Before we, is before I go included in the caravan, they said all all provinces, right? Yeah, it will cover all sixteen regions of the Philippines. Oh, as long as Antigua is there, Your Honor. No, oh, as long as Bul Bulacan and Makati and San Juan, San Juan has beautiful heritage sites as well. Oh, oh. you Baraswain Church, <clears throat> Baraswain Church. That's the Museo ng Katipunan. Yes, as a uh, Contribution to our culture history. Beautiful. The culture map na ba yun? Isa pa, Madam Chair. Madam, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, if I may, culture mapping. Uh, we have a pending bill. We have a pending bill. I hope my three colleagues here can co-author with me and um, as chair of the... I will work with you closely, Madam Chair. I'm the chair of the Arts and Culture Committee, a newly created committee. And vice chair is our... Committee on Tourism Chair, and she represents the chair in the NCCA board meetings and the National Museum. To marry arts and culture and tourism, we can have a small group meeting so that the NCCA chair and tourism uh, can, can use uh, the resources of these agencies because they have their own. So, hindi puro hihingi kayo nakalodge inyo. You can use your own budget for your other programs. And culture mapping is also funded through DepEd. There's an earmarked program for culture mapping and teachers, just so that also you can have an idea. What I did was UPV Sias, we gave little funds for culture mapping. They partnered with DepEd Antique. So the teachers are given skills to do culture mapping and the output of their culture mapping of two years during the pandemic is now institutionalized into a hard copy book, which will be uh, put online as well. Then the contents of this culture mapping will be uh, what you are promoting, part of the caravan. Kain, sayaw, salita, anta, yun. Mm -mm. Ano ba ito? Alikaan. Yes. So who is our Intramuros administration head? Madam Secretary, before you became secretary, we had a program with NCCA in Intramuros, where they occupied a space that used to be the aquarium. But I believe that there are some structural defects that we cannot open the Likha and for which funds were located. There are other pending sites for the DOT through the IA is supposed to the NCCA because we have all the exhibits. We just need the space. May I request before you reach plenary by next month that this would have been settled between your agency and NCCA so that they can already move their exhibits in Likaan. Likaan is a resource center where we bring in weavers and artisans from all over the country uh, to sell their goods, uh, no cost to no no akita, no profit for government at the same time to show how they do their works. I know that NCCA, Maria uh, Brihino of NCCA, has pending possible sites in Intramuros. Sabi ko nga, bakit hindi buksan ang ganda-ganda sa Puerto Real? Kaya lang may 
structural defects yata dun sa ino-occupy nilang space. May I hear from uh, the OIC of IA, Madam, if you allow, there are possible sites, I think, that umaka nag usap na kayo. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, the present situation of the Likaan at Puerto Real really has big cracks inside. And uh, based on the recommendation of the DPWH, really have to close. But we're uh, in contact with NCCA and we're going to get a um, structural engineer so that we can find out how to fix the um, interior so we can reopen. But we're also looking for other areas to transfer. Uh, but unfortunately, the the area of the Likan is right now is really a good space and we spent a lot for renovating that place. Um, it, yeah. is just to fit the area. How long will it take, Sayang? We will have to rely on the, the last uh, inspection of the building was in October, I'm uh, sorry, before. And that was their recommendation to get a um, uh, structural engineering firm that has uh, experience in heritage sites. But um, we'd also like to talk to the NCCA that we can continue with the programs at the gardens, uh, especially if uh, we don't have the rainy season anymore. It will, the weather will clear up. Perhaps between now and the plenary, you would have gotten the opinion of a structural engineer of government, the private sector, it's up to you, whether it is worth retrofitting, of course it is, but how long will it take? And if it will take months or years, then we just relocate them at a site that is available in Intramuros where they are willing to move. I can provide the funding for the transfer. Walang problema yon. Sayang eh. In the meantime, they can use tutorial for their activities. Uh, that's right, uh, Your Honor. So we'll try to take a look at other sites in Intramuros. Yes. I know the original sites. Si Ria Brihino ang focal person. We will do that, Your Honor. Yes. Madam Chair, uh, gusto ko lang iparating din yung national parks. Nagbigay tayo ng 2 million ng 2018. I don't know where they put it. Uh, if you don't have it, that's okay. We can submit it to the committee. We made an amendment. Uh, national Park Development Council for Cultural Activities 2018 pa. So four years ago. That was the last time when I was here kasi. Yeah. Uh, Senator Legard. Yes. Um, for national parks, we actually made use of the money for an event because um, Baco Park actually just um, turned 200 years. Um, so um, it was, there was a small event um, where we used that fund. Yes. Yes, Senator Legard. Yes, we, we will, Senator Legard. We also sent an invite, I think, that during the time, but you were unable to. Yes, it was during the pandemic. Yes. Can we... It's standard in our budget, no, in our GAA, that all monies, funds, uh, amendments, individual or even committee amendments, um, reports should be given to the committee, to the Senate. That's and part of it, right? Pre previous amendments. Yes. Previous uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Secretary and all our team, the OT team. Yes. Senator Lauren, just to share to the body, there was a time that Muntika na madelist yung rice terraces from the UNESCO. Kasi one, we're not, uh, parang hindi na may maintain yung rice terraces. Um, but I'm not sure, I think during the time of Speaker Alvarez, they did, di ba meron sila nung yung tour nila? Tapos nag-set nag aside sila ng 50 million I don't know kung ano na nangyari dun sa 50 million. Sa, kaya sa ba na, na, nabigay yun? Hindi uh, ako sa amin, Madam Chair. Kasi automatic ko sa amin, Madam Chair, yung funding ng 10% is automatic allocated to the NCCA, which yun yung ginagamit nila for maintenance of all these heritage sites. Coming from the 1620. Isa pa din dilemma yung 
Mas alam ni Saint Lawrence, anong tawag doon? Ah, Ifuga House. Ang isa pang dilemma, I was able to go to Mayuyao. Isang problema din natin ngayon, yung mga Ifuga House, because it's privately owned. Tapos the way they uh, restore it, yung yero na, di ba? Hindi na pawid. So, from the top, ang pangit na kasi yung GI sheet. Eh, minsan kinukulayan nila ng green or... So, medyo eyesore na din siya. So, I don't know kung anong compromise yung pwede natin gawin. Kasi nga, parang sabi daw ng COA, it's a private property. So, hindi pwedeng bigyan ng government funds. Tama ka. I went to Bangaan by foot uh, maybe 10 years ago because I saw the eyesore that you're referring to. These were made of kogon-colored uh, GI. GI sheets. So, I allocated funds through the provincial government. They were able to provide the people, the private homes. I don't know how they did it legally. Ayo parin, maski na ibigay mo na yung pondo. Kasi daw, ilang taon lang masisira na. So, yun. Pero may batas dyan eh, di ba? Yung heritage, ano, kailangan sundin nila. Kaya lang, pag private. And siguro, Sen. Lauren, marami na naman bagong building materials ngayon. If I may, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I mentioned earlier, so I would like to maintain the look of uh, the old Kogon, Pauli, but it's easy. Ayaw nila kasi mabilis masira. But there's a new material because of the new technology. I can ask siguro si Gov. John Dick. Uh, sabi niya, sabi lang siya. Because he's, meron siya parang kogon, uh, kogon, it's uh, made of uh, uh, tougher material. Bago, parang GI sheet, pero, hindi ko alam eh. Basta, that's what he used in his uh, own uh, resort. Kasi it's nice. Kasi it's really an eyesore. Sayang yung mga, like the vantage points in Banawi Rice Terraces. Pag may kita mo talaga yung mga bubong, mga GI sheets, it, uh, it really, uh, it's an eyesore. So sana, ipag pwede natin tigyan. Answer of the chair on the civil on the muntik na the listing of Banawi Rice Terraces answered. Was it answered? No. I think na, na prevent naman na prevent na, na prevent. Is naman. it because of the what? Not not the kogon. No others. Well, why is yung I think sa DA ata di ba? Wala nang nagmaintain ng mga terraces itself because they don't want to plant rice anymore. Oh, so, wala na yung parang next generation. Not just the tourism sector, but also the agriculture sector. That's why, uh, would it not be good to list all the UNESCO sites and have a special meeting on these sites with the host LGUs and the representatives from government agencies that are maintaining the sites. If it's Banawe, it's DA. DA, the regional director of Cordillera, must be there. If it's the Baroque churches, it would be either LGU or DPWH because the Baroque churches are from Pauay up to Miagao in different areas of the country. Baras is Baraswine part of the Baroque churches? No. No, it's not. Okay. Sige. Thank you. Yes, please. You wrap up. It's your Yeah, I'm pakain dalawa. I just want to wrap up. Uh, it's nice uh, hearing from our Senate President Pro Tempore, uh, who really, uh, is very supportive of uh, the tourism, lalo na sa heritage. Uh, para kayang nakinig na rin sa daya, eh, pag nakikinig ka rin. So, meron, no? Anyway, um, I'm really excited also, um, Madam, um, Madam Secretary, dun sa culture and uh, heritage. That's really, um, uh, we're, it's, uh, we're so sure that we really support that. And in fact, we need to really, um, if we have to supplement or enhance even more, because I think that's what we really lack in the, in the past. If you compare to Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, you hear, they really put emphasis on culture and heritage. So, the, Thank you very much. I, I commend you for really giving priority for that. Last but not the least, Madam Chair, from Sa Intermuros is here. I'm hoping that if we can do something about Panagang, if we can really um, focus and uh, prioritize some promos, because that's our last remaining um, giant artifact.
our history. Sayang if you can make it a really a walk um a walking tour, magaling pag walking tour kaya lang ang daming problema, mga informal settlers no na probably we can talk to also maraming problema eh. We can talk to NHA or uh, the local LG Manila so that we can make information para sa Europe, ang gaganda pa rin ng structures na make it walking tours, shops mga ganun. Ah uh, kaya lang it's present condition, talagang it uh, It will be a challenge, so we can look at that. Na siguro si before yun, um, Sir Eduardo, basic. Uh, what can you say about this? Yung ano, yung Damuro, sayang eh. When it's our last remaining giant artifact of history. Yes, thank you for that observation, uh, Your Honor. Um, actually, we have this um, program for the um, informal settlers of Intramuros. We are now... Uh, we, we have a relocation site already and we're building the uh, homes for them in um, Morong Rizal and by uh, the first quarter of next year we will be able to relocate um, three informal settlers one of which is in the middle of the General Luna Street the main street of Intramuros Um, along with two other communities. How many, how many informal settler families are uh, three inside? 369. Well, these are for the first uh, relocation. Uh, uh, total, total po. Medyo malaki. That's 1,000 over a little over 1,000. So, LG Manila uh, already has a uh, housing, socialized housing. In, like in city medium rise. Maybe some of them who are working here or that's what they did also in San Juan eh. Kasi Urbanized, we do not want to just throw them sa malayo because there's no, there's, it's far from the livelihood. I think if you can work with LGU Manila, I know that they have a medium nice housing so that they don't, they don't be, they will not be displaced from their places of work. Pero I think we have to look into that because I'm chairman of the committee on housing, but as I should of our, uh, I will support that because nangihina po ako, Madam Secretary, because intramuros, no? It's, uh, again, we can make Just like um, any beautiful European countries, ang ganda nun eh. Kaya lang, with its present state, we have a lot of uh, uh, things to do. It's, it's, really, it's really a little bit challenge. Pero sana pagtulungan natin that uh, we can uh, make it really a walkable um, um, tourism area talaga. No? Na hindi lang yung, yung parang ano lang, spots lang eh. But dapat yung buong intramuros. Uh, we can make it. So, yes, I agree, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. And thank you. I'm congratulate lang with my friend uh, Marga. I'm happy that you're in the Tourism Motions Board. You have such a of our support. And uh, personally, uh, Secretary Fasco knows about it. Yung, yung uh, Filipino to Cycle Tourism, that's my personal uh, support for the tourism industry on how we will be able to share the hidden treasures of the country. So congratulations. Your Honor, Senator JV, the TPP just wanted to thank you. No, for, you are a staunch supporter of the Philippine Motorcycle Tourism Campaign. Maraming salamat. We'll continue that and strengthen that. Madam you, Chair. Sana pasalamatan mo, maski hindi mga nagbamotrosiklo. <laughs> Maraming salamat, Ren, your honor for everything, always. <laughs> we, will, we will work on everything you mentioned also. Sen Joel? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, sabi ko nga ako sa likod, ako yung pinakamadaldal dito sa grupo na to, pero I will be very short and uh, let me also state for the record that I'm in full support of uh, the department's uh, budget together with all its attached agencies. Uh, I'm a supporter of Secretary uh, Cristina and I've seen uh, her work in uh, her hometown in uh, Cebu. We uh, closely worked together uh, last Congress, uh, Madam Chair, especially in uh, uh, job generating uh, programs. Of course, we uh, congratulate uh, GM Mark and Marga. Uh, we're very happy for both of you and especially seeing you uh, today. And uh, as we hear a while ago, Senator Lauren, uh, she asked me to uh, remind you guys that uh, you will have surprise quizzes uh, next time when you come back. My surprise quiz. Siya. Uh, lilipat ako ng channel from Dayao to just uh, one, one, one issue that is very close to my heart is a job creation. And uh, uh, just today, uh, just today, 
uh, the uh, unemployment rate rose by 0.1%. No? So in July 2022 is 5.2%. That's 2.60 million unemployed. Uh, today, lumabas na yung August 2022, 5.3%. That's 6. 0.68 million uh, unemployed, difference of around uh, 80,000. And please bear in mind that uh, when you talk about these figures and the uh, rates that's being conducted uh, through survey, hindi ko kasama dito yung hindi naghahanap ng trabaho. And that's why kanina dun sa DBM sinabi ko nga, hindi natin alam kung additional 80,000 na unemployed, sila ba eh, noong ba eh, unemployed na talaga sila or... Sila, yung 80,000 na yun, eh, oh, finally, maghahanap na ako ng trabaho at hindi ako nakakuha ng trabaho. But having said that, this representation also filed the uh, institutionalization of national employment recovery strategy, which the uh, previous administration um, uh, implemented, but uh, according to the executive order uh, issued by then-President uh, Rodrigo Duterte, it will expire this year, 2022 of December. So my first question is, uh, are you supportive of uh, institutionalizing this uh, nurse program? Because I think it is important to have a, uh, to have a uh, 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 master plan, a roadmap for job creation, wherein you would be able to pinpoint, oh, how many jobs will you be creating? Because in the nurse program, they're targeting to produce about 2 million jobs, 1 million from the private sector, 1 million uh, from the public sector. And in that particular program, they can easily pinpoint, oh, this will come from agriculture sector, manufacturing, tourism sector. Now, if the target for tourism sector, for instance, is 100, 200,000 jobs, where would this job be coming from, what particular region, if we can uh, break it down up to the uh, provincial level, the better. Now, if I'm in TESDA and I know that I will be producing this much, for example, in the agricultural sector, I will not put so much money for scholarship in uh, Metro Manila for agricultural uh, sector to uh, create jobs. Because I have a roadmap na sinusundan. So, yun po yung uh, unang katanungan ko and uh, I think it is important to note that tourism sector is one of our uh, 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 job generation uh, uh, sector. Uh, it accounts to about 5 to 7 percent of our employment in the entire country. So, yun yung uh, second question ko, no? Papakyawin ko na kasi hindi pa ako kumakain. Actually, kaya kala ko dito may pakain si Senator Nancy. Wait, pala pala um, tayo, hindi kumakain. So, you know, since may food na kayo dyan, your... Yeah. This is, uh, so, mabilis na mag-list lang po. No? Una, yung uh, nurse program to institutionalize. Pangalawa, itong... Uh, for example, yung accommodation and food service uh, activity sector lang. Yun lang, no? 5 to 7 percent na yung uh, employment. And uh, siguro yung plano natin to enhance it uh, for potential uh, employment generation of the tourism uh, industry. So, yun lang po yung uh, gusto kong uh, itanong. And siguro yung pangatlo, yung mga job fairs, no, if you're uh, coordinating. It's about to, ano, bro. Kaya lang makita ka, nakita mo yung itsura. So, yun lang po. At uh, maraming salamat, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. I would like to recognize our minority floor leader. Pero bago ka umalis, may yung isang tanong ko. I wanted to wait for the answer before I, you know. Anong preparation? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But, but can we just, you know, uh, 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 hear the good voice of our uh, secretary? Um, thank you. Madam Chair, if I may respond. Thank you very much uh, to our Senate Majority Floor Leader for your deep concern for the employment of our fellow Filipinos. We join you and fully support the nurse program, uh, the DOT being part of the nurse task force and its deliverables being the conduct of manpower trainings to retool and upscale tourism workers and stakeholders community-based tourism organization restart program, as well as skills mapping initiatives uh, to ensure that uh, we continue to upgrade the skills of our Filipino workers. So definitely we confirm that we fully support the nurse program. Secondly, um, in collaboration with both the DOLE and the TESDA, we are uh, continuing trainings 
We are continuing with the upskilling of our workforce to address the necessities of the various sectors of the tourism industry. In particular, we are continuing the Filipino brand of service excellence, which we are uh, introducing and have introduced to uh, various industries in uh, sectors in the tourism industry. Uh, in addition to this, I think you will be pleased to know that uh, by virtue of a memorandum of agreement that we signed with the Department of Labor and Employment, in September 22 to 24, we conducted a Philippine tourism job fair, which yielded over 8,000 jobs uh, across the Philippines. And it will be a multi-month campaign that will end uh, next year, uh, which we foresee to be able to address the over 12,000 job workforce shortage in the tourism industry. So uh, we join you uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, the workforce shortages and the workforce loss of employment out of the pandemic will be addressed by way of these efforts. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Madam Secretary. I'm uh, glad that uh, you are conducting all these jobs, job, job fairs. No? And uh, imagine, uh, Madam Chair, no? 8,000 uh, instant uh, jobs yung uh, na, na, nakakuha ng trabaho, nabigyan ng pag-asa, nabigyan ng uh, uh, peace of mind na may pangtustos siya sa kanyang uh, mga mahal sa buhay. And uh, it's also important to note yung... Uh, trainings ng test that should be based on the industry kasi uh, uh, dapat talagang based on industry demands yung pinapatupad na training regulations and uh, if if they need to upskill uh, if they need upskilling retooling it will be based on the industry's uh, needs para nang sa ganoon we are sure that uh, we are addressing job skills mismatch so i hope that you will keep on uh, doing that and uh, Again, I'm here to fully support the uh, budget of uh, DOT, especially their uh, initiatives in creating uh, and generating uh, jobs for our uh, kababayans. And uh, of course, my support to our dear uh, uh, Vice Chair, the, uh, the uh, Presiding Officer, Senator Nancy Binay. Maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Your surprise, I'm done. Huh? I'm, okay. I'm very quick today, so... <laughs> Thank you, and uh, thank you sa lunch sa susunod. Thank you. Majority <laughs> floor leader. And now I recognize our minority floor leader for his questions. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Chairperson. Uh, ano time ba kayo nag-start? 11. Oh, sorry, Secretary. Akala ko kasi 1 eh. I was misinformed na 1 p.m. So. I'm sorry. So you must be tired na rin. So... Ano na lang tayo? Uh, I missed the I missed the presentation. Pero ano general ano natin? What's the general direction? What's the general plan? Uh, what's the general message that we want the uh, learners, the or or those not living in the Philippines to to get uh, and as a reason to visit the Philippines? Sige pa. Mayong hapon. Your Honor, first of all, under the administration of the President, we wish to convey to the world that the Philippines is open, the Philippines is ready to welcome international tourists back into the country. The strategy that uh, the Department of Tourism is employing is composed of seven main objectives. First, an improvement in infrastructure, recognizing that the necessity of ensuring that it should be as convenient and easy as possible for our tourists to get from one destination to the next. This includes as well not only the improvement of roads, bridges, and water systems, but our gateways, including our airports and seaports. For this reason, we have coordinated with the Department of Transportation. Second is a comprehensive digitalization strategy to bring the tourism industry into the digital age, the development of a tourist lifecycle app, to make it as convenient as possible for tourists to book their flights, accommodations, uh, and other components of their trip the Philippines. We're also putting up a tourist assistance call center to address any and all complaints or issues that a tourist may have when he's in the Philippines. 
Third is uh, to ensure that we enhance the overall tourism experience by studying each and every single one of the tourist life cycle. Um, and this also includes uh, studying how we may be able to increase convenience, health and safety, and uh, security of their tourists while they're here in the Philippines. Fourth, we fully intend to fully maximize domestic tourism, recognizing the great potential that it has had, especially during the pandemic uh, in light of the lockdowns. And so we're uh, engaging in a heritage, culture, and arts caravan nationwide to uh, maximize the development of our destinations, including the key destinations, as well as emerging and yet uh, to be known destinations. In addition to this, uh, we will also make sure that uh, we uh, collaborate with our local government units, as well as our public and private stakeholders recognizing the necessity that in the crafting of policy, we must listen to those on the ground to be able to craft policy that uh, is responsive to the changing needs of the industry. Um, in addition to this, we fully intend to equalize the promotion and development of our tourism destinations. This also we will be doing in partnership with the TPB as far as giving equal opportunities for our destinations to be promoted. It's also very important for us to ensure the diversification of our tourism portfolio by adding to our existing product offerings uh, by introducing a multidimensional tourism approach in that not only will we expose our tourists to the destination itself, but all the other components of the said destination, such as food, the products of our artisans, and the like. We also plan to adopt a program where uh, we will upsell uh, tourist packages from the known destinations to the lesser known destinations, so that we would be able to present more opportunities for our tourists to be versed on the lesser known areas in the Philippines. So that in a nutshell uh, is the strategy of the department. And we will proceed uh, on uh, three main uh, approaches to be able to accomplish these objectives, connectivity, convenience, and equality. And we would be happy to expound on this uh, should your honor Wish. Yeah, reading materials na lang siguro, Secretary. Maganda. I, I, I'm really convinced. Pero have you captured, do we have a slogan now, how to promote the Philippines? The, have, do we have a slogan? Ano there is an existing slogan, Your Honor. It's more fun in the Philippines. So pa rin. Uh, recently, we have not changed the slogan and we have no intention of changing it. Rather, we intend to evolve it to ensure that uh, this reflects the best qualities of the Philippines. Studies show, and uh, the Tourism Promotion Board can expound, that uh, the trends of the world market, as far as travelers are concerned, are that post-pandemic, they now wish for more immersive, substantial, and experiential uh, tours and uh, travel experiences. And uh, the highlighting of one's strength of culture and uh, identity as a nation has built well for our neighbors as far as the ASEAN region is concerned. And we fully intend that in this evolution, we will make sure that the, the Philippines will continue to be fun, but at the same time also herald the best qualities of the v Filipino brand. Good, good. Uh, and, uh, yes, man. The, see, baka si COO Marga can expound on how you're going to do the evolving. Um, how changing the it's more fun. Yes. So picking up from... Okay, Hello, yes. Yeah. So picking up from the secretary, you know, just for a research-based... Uh, um, Abercrombie and Kent, one of the largest UK-based travel companies, commissioned a study that shows that there is a 26 increase in family reunions, friend reunions, and in a study compiled by TPB from a leading global data science provider called a uh, Euro Monitor and its focus group discussions with stakeholders. The top considerations or motivations for travel are reconnecting with family, new experiences, wellness, spirituality, looking for self and education. So we are looking to incorporate this into um, 
it's more fun in the Philippines into that brand. So um, furthermore, we will look at study into that also, but without changing it completely. We'll rehash and reinvent it. Yun lang, um, send ko ko. Yun yung, men- well, I raised this during the CA hearing of Secretary Fasco. And para sa akin kasi, we keep every six years, tuwing may bagong presidente, nagpapalit tayo ng slogan compared to, compared to our ASEAN neighbors na, ano nga ba yan, yung truly Asia, yes, yes, but... yan. Yan. tapos yung amazing Thailand, di ba? Parang tayo, every six years, nagpapalit tayo ng slogan. So, nauubos yung budget natin because it's not cheap to... Change a slogan. Alam natin yan, every time na tumatakbo tayo uh, for a position, di ba, kasama yan dun sa ginagastos sa natin. And isa pang pinakakulang talaga natin, we're not placing enough ads. Yes. Kasi nga, limited yung budget. So hindi nagmaman siya yung slogan natin. So for like next year, how much are we spending for placement? Yes. Pwede ba tayo mag-guide dun? What line? What line ng... What line and then yung amount where you can charge for the ads that you are placing? Saan dyan? Yes, well, let me just review. Hold on. Saan po yan? You have, yeah. Hindi, okay. actually, under siya sa TPB. Oh, TPB, yes. Yeah, TPB, yeah. Oh. an attached agency. How much? Uh, anong line? Yes, yeah, so, sir, actually, under the BESF, um, if you look now, B15, year mark revenues for 2020 to 2022, TPB has 2.1 in its SAGF. So, under the DBM, BTRS, as of March 31, 2022, it is now at 20 billion. The budget approved for us. For, yeah, the budget approved for us is only at 1.1 B, no, for the TPB. Uh, when in the and previous year, reason ng uh, DBM, why they're not releasing this amount? Eh, technically, pera nyo to, eh. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, our budget from the previous year was actually 1.7 B. Um, I think I was told that uh, uh, well, our, our initial spend was not uh, was at a 25 percent uh, when they reviewed, but that was somewhat mid-year. The most of our spend comes in towards the end of the year, is why, uh, and we're looking to end at a 90 percent spend, pa rin. So. Parang yung 1 billion, hindi nyo rin na-utilize? No, no, you, na, ma, ma, you, mauubos siya, Madam Chair. So actually, um, moving forward, no, for... How much did you request sa DBM? For 1.7, Madam oh, Chair. But, hindi, kasi parang meron kayong running balance na 20 billion, di ba? Yes. So, ano, but, that's in the, yes, that's in the Bureau of Treasury. Nasa, yes. ano siya, under BSG... Special, special account yun? Budget, budgetary support to government uh-huh. corporation. Yeah. We're a separate, ano, yeah. uh, your honor. 20, with 20 billion uh, held in a special account by the Bureau of Treasury for... For the TPB, your honor. For the TPB. Yes, your honor. For the TPB. It's there, yes. So, kung meron silang share dun sa PAGCOR, the 25 of the 50%. So technically, meron silang 20 billion. Yeah, so, uh, what are the rules in accessing that 20 billion? You are you cannot request uh, in bulk. You are dependent on decision of yeah. an outside uh, department. Did they tell you 1.1? Ganun lang? It's a DBM's discretion, Your Honor. Ganun ba yung secretary? Ganun ba yung pag-usapan nyo sa cabinet meeting? DBM's discretion. Uh, unless the, the money is not there. <laughs> that is not discussed in the cabinet meeting, but rather uh, entirely within the decision of the DBM, Your Honor. Tapos yung ma-minus niya yun, di ba, Madam Chia, 1.1. Ma-minus niya doon sa 20-something. And the 20-something is raised through, what, travel tax? Ano ba? Pag over the, ah? Uh, uh, travel tax, pagko yun, over the years, pagko? Only? Pagko is the only source? Over the years? Ah, uh, No. Duty free, duty free, duty free po. Uh, oh, ano lang tayo ng ano? Uh, uh, sige, we can give you a little. kami na reading na totals yes, plus, yes, plus yes. legal basis para maaral namin yan. Yes, yes. Because yes, yes, magandang yes. point rin raise ni Marga eh. Uh, they have funds, special account ito, definitely, di ba? Yes. Parang, 
trust fund dah, parang for specific purpose, yes. for your purposes, yes. purposes yes. of your board. Yes, Your Honor, for, yes, yes. yes. And for some promotions, yes. Parang hinihinay-hinay ka, ang susubihin, hinihinay-hinay ka, kung 20 billion yan, bibigyan kita ng 1 billion, ay 20 years mo pala hintuin yan to get that. Eh, every year, dinadagdagan din yun, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, wrong, yes, yes, there's something wrong, there's something wrong with such a system. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, if, siguro, if, if we decide to go all out, na tourism na is the parang uh, we place our bets on sa, sorry I'll just use sa gam, gambling terminology we place our bets on tourism if that is the decision of uh, this admin or a new uh, new admin or a future admin pag ganyan ang decision niya there must be a mechanism to access this fund all okay, all in ka dapat tourism may promote mo Diba? So, gano'n ang gawin natin Thank you In the meantime siguro nga ngayon del but pandemic kaya yan ang tanong ko sa iyo Secretary na Supposed to be tourism, tinaparating sinasabi na low-hanging fruit for us to generate uh, foreign currency. Yan ang sabi. Ewan ko kung may minuwala ka dyan. Do you agree with such a statement? I completely agree with you, Your Honor. Uh, considering that in 2019, the tourism industry contributed at least 2.5 trillion pesos to our GDP or over 12%. Okay, but pero kung i, ano natin yun, i-disaggregate natin yun, magkano dun ang from foreign tourists? Malaki rin? Uh, that's actually... Okay, okay, uh, okay. kasi <laughs> ang akin lang po yung ganito ah, narinig ko na do, uh, kung domestic travel, domestic, domestic tourism yung ating focus, di tayo-tayo. Pesos, pesos. Pesos, pesos yun eh. Tayo-tayo. We are actually... We might be contributing to GDP in the consumption uh, column, domestic domestic consumption. Pero pag tourism na pore papasok mo rito, hard currency and dala, you might be contributing na dun sa last column, which is the parang net export yun, dollar earners yun eh. Yun lang, yun lang, yun, yun lang po yung point ko na ngayon, domestic tourism, siyempre love of country, tsaka education, one of the, one of the fifth post education na uh, we get to know more about our country, appreciate our country, the beauty of our country, okay yun. But yung sentence kanina na, yung statement na it's a tourism is a low-hanging fruit for the generation of foreign currency. Do you, do you agree with that uh, statement? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Therefore, okay. Therefore, Mag-attract tayo ng, hindi lang tayo tayo, okay na yun tayo tayo kasi ikot naman talaga tayo ng Pilipinas eh. We open, we have to now attract foreigners to come in, you know, bringing their, their for, the dollars and other foreign currencies to, to be converted to pesos and spent here. Kaya sana, sana gawin natin, ano ba yung number, ano nyo yung sabi mo, overall experience na ano, hindi, uh, Ano ba yung letter, dat, dalawang C mo, ano yun? Isa mo, convenient, convenient, no? Con connectivity, convenience, and equality. So, convenient, dapat convenient. So, mag ano tayo, maging parati tayo aware sa mga reklamo. Ang hirap pumunta sa Pilipinas, bakit? Uh, ano, di, yung rules, iba-iba. <laughs> iba-iba. Meron lang ako kapatid na, kapatid ko na pagbiyahin niya. I don't know nito, I don't know ngayon, kasi... Hindi na ako bumabiyahe din rules na hirapan ako sa rules eh. So, pagdating daw niya sa, uh, sa, sa counter sa New York, ibang app pina... Masaya, pagdating ng stopover sa Japan, ibang app naman ang pina-fill up sa kanya. Tinanong bakit? Ah, kasi yung doon sa US, requirement ng uh, government, uh, ng, ng airline, pagdating sa Japan, papunta Philippines, requirement na ng government, ganun. So... Well, sana we, we study all of these things, yung mga, ano pa ba yun, yung, ano sa certi certificate? One Health Pass, and isa pa, yung may Vaxert, mga ganun po. So, let's uh, try to, pero we have to speak with one voice, eh, kayo sa cabinet, eh. I mean, the president has said, uh, let us learn to live with the virus. Uh, siguro, I, I don't know if that is his official position, ano, position ng official family din. Sana lahat kayo, how, how do we implement such a uh, such a thinking, learn to live with the virus? Ang ibig yatang sabihin nung para sa akin, let's not be too, too 
scared to paranoid uh, of the virus in such a way na yung actions natin also scared of potential visitors pagbasa nila hey the national state of national calamity Pilipinas uh, hanggang December 31, 2022 eh, wala ako let me go to some other some other country more welcoming so I do not know Secretary how do we how do we be consistent with all of our uh, if this is what we believe in let's be consistent with our actions pero there's the there's DOH dapat sa uh, cabinet meetings niyo ano na kayo one one uh, one mind one thinking na po kayo hmm. if i may respond madam chair first of all your honor thank you for the support you have expressed for the tourism industry and the great contribution that it has had and can have to our country. I think uh, we can rest easy in the fact that the president recognizes the necessity of balancing the protection of life and promotion of livelihood, especially in recognition of all the economic upheavals that our people have suffered because of the pandemic and various calamities. And in light of this, the president's directive has been to study all of the remaining stringent protocols that were put in place at the height of pandemic, pandemic and may no longer be relevant at present day, considering the rate of our vaccination as well as the rate of our booster and the increased capacity of our hospitals. In this regard, uh, there had been internal discussions intergovernmentally between the DOH, the DOT, the uh, DOJ, and the various agencies that are members of the IATF, which had then, as a result of the presentation of the Department of Tourism before the DOT, resulted in the president issuing an executive order to relax the mask mandate doors. And this built a lot of confidence into travel into our country, conveying a sense of openness and readiness to receive tourists. Subsequent to that, uh, several meetings have also been had between our agencies wherein, uh, per the directive of the president, the remainder of the stringent protocols that are no longer applicable to the circumstances in the Philippines may be lifted by the end of the year. So our direction at the moment on the part of the Department of Tourism is to identify what are these remaining protocols propose its liberalization to the end that by the end of the year, the Philippines will be as open as possible as far as the receipt of tourists. That is not to say that we will not continue the minimum health and safety protocols because these are still in place and we will ensure through coordination with our accommodation and transport sector and related agencies that this will continue to be in place. I wanted to address also uh, your question with regard to the specific contribution of the tourism industry in terms of visitor receipts. And uh, the answer to your question is that uh, in 2019, it had contributed 482 billion, 151 million pesos into the Philippines. So uh, this uh, emphasizes uh, the point of uh, how greatly the tourism industry contributes to our country. But the challenge remains as far as the DOT and its attached agencies is concerned uh, on the part of our budget. Because uh, while... Uh, meron kayong, parang, parang meron kayong, uh, budget appeals, a wish list, gano'n? Yes. Anong bottom line po nun, how much siya? Uh, well, uh, originally, we had proposed a budget of 12.2 billion uh, to the DBM, uh, 3.2 billion of which uh, was approved, and to add our attached agencies, that's a total of a little over 3.5 billion from what was originally proposed. From what was originally proposed of? 12.2 billion, Your Honor. <laughs> so... Kung yung ma-minus ko yung 3, ma-9B ang wish list ninyo, gano'n? Is, is that it? Um, actually, Your Honor, uh, on the part of the DOT, we proposed 12.2 and uh, what was approved uh, on our part was only 3.2. So, so yes, 9B. yes. 
Um, this is a composite of uh, not only soft projects, but importantly, infrastructure, an infrastructure component into the Department of Tourism. I fully understand, Madam Chair, that there are infrastructure funds lodged in other agencies that serve uh, tourism. Uh, yeah, yeah. However, the challenge, as we have seen, is that at most, our suggestions are recom recommendatory because uh, in the trips, for example, under the DPWH, over 80% of these projects are continuing projects. And therefore, notwithstanding the due diligence that we had conducted all over as our 16 regions since the start of this administration to solicit what are the necessary infrastructure improvements that need to be made, the challenge for us is that almost all of the suggestions that we had made were not carried because there are continuing projects under the TRIPS. And without the DOT having access to infrastructure funds, as far as the agency is concerned, we continue to be saddled but, with uh, yeah, difficulties. Pero, pero Secretary, we are not even competent to build. Oh, well, uh, in the same way, uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Where do you want the funds to be lodged? I think there are two options should uh, the funds be provided to the DOT. First, to find it out to the DPWH, which has the expertise to do this. Or second, to uh, the TIAZA, which is the infrastructure arm. The point I'm trying to make, Madam Chair, is that we will go back to the absor absorptive capacity of DPWH or even TIAZA. Madam Chair, as we have seen from other departments, such as the DEPED, the DOH, and the DA, which have access to infrastructure funds, but which send out to the DPWH the utilization of these funds, it is entirely possible for uh, a department to have funds for infrastructure, but not be the, aid, the implementing agency. Madam Chair, you... NTFL ka ka pinag-uusapan natin eh, ganun din eh. Mas malaki pang halaga dito eh. O, oh, ganun din yun eh. Pa pinapasa nila identification and then implementation. Yes, so, actually, dapat kayo yung nag-identify dun sa 16 billion. Tapos kayo yung magbibigay sa DPWH. It's not the other way around where DPWH will give you the list tapos tsaka nyo... Eh, paano man ang DPWH? The technique nga, ang nakita natin nga kanina is to, to attach this as an annex. Pwede natin... Oh, hindi kayo, ito, pero ito nga, wala na, 9B na, no, tinanggal na yun, eh, totally, wala kayong infra, infra on the... What do you call it? Anong, anong, um, anong pangalan natin yung road leading the, uh, to, uh, to this area? Sir, no? kung nakalist yun, nakalist yung trip C, di ba? Nasa nakalist yun? It's in the DPWH. Pero may listing yung, may listing yung 16 billion na yan. Yes, but... Uh, but uh, most of it are uh, 15 continuing years. projects uh, initially started already by the DPWH. So, yung sabi mo, you, you have new ideas na 9, totally 9B more or less. Yes, uh, Your Honor. So, baka nga, I would assume, baka kaya hindi na pagbigyan ng, DP, ng DBM because alam nila yung capability ng, ng DP, DPWH. Ng DP, baka yes. Baka hindi uh, nila kayang i-implement yung additional fund. Pero agree, agree na ako kay Secretary kasi parating na lang tayo yung F M R diba? Farm to Market Road. Ang tagal-tagal na na konsepto na yan. De dekada na dekada na 50 uh, years Every year with the budget, si Ben, dami dami natin yung FMA. That's why Mary, you know, if I'm correct, mentioned yan sa sona ni Presidente, right? May, meron siya sinabi rin na farm to market to, may sinabi rin siya na roads leading to uh, tourism sites and yet to be discovered tourism sites. Sabi niya gano'n eh. Which is, which is a, a new idea, which we can, although in the form of horizontal lalo din yan, the, the development, pero hindi na yung lumang tugtugin na nas, uh, ano na, gasgas na na FMR. Diba? At least we're developing... Not, not no longer connecting the old farm to the to the market 
na sobra ng dami na yun but we didn't bring now a wide network to tourist areas and to the yet to be discovered uh, tourist areas yun ang natatandaan ko sa zona niya eh so I think this, this is parang this is a new concept which will give a boost which will give a boost to the infrastructure program na rin local infrastructure program but with tourism in mind I'm not sure kung time ni Sec Jimenez yan na-introduce kasi during that time yung Palawan Underground hindi ma-develop yung kalsada papunta doon kasi nga Barangay Road hmm. so they introduced this concept para pwede uh, gumasas yung national government sa Barangay Roads leading to tourist destinations So kumusta ang historical historical ano ng Tripsy? Kumusta ang historical funding yan? So 16 siya for this year Tama 15.6 For last year ilan siya? 2021 Kasi 9 lang uh, As I understand it 9 ang request nila for next year Your Honor. Yes. Your Honor, there has not been any uh, substantial change in the budget, but I'd like to clarify that uh, there was a time in uh, 2021, if I'm not mistaken, wherein um, the uh, DPWH had advised the DOT to no longer submit any new uh, projects related to the trips uh, as a matter of policy. And this is the reason why uh, many uh, infrastructure opportunities as far as tourism development were missed. Uh, for this year, we were informed that there is indeed a budget of 15 over 15 billion, but that uh, most of it is composed of ongoing programs. So the challenge for us is that we are unable to introduce substantially any new infrastructure projects that we have identified from our uh, market scanning of the 16 regions. And just to belabor the point, the importance of infrastructure to tourism development Specific to the ASEAN region, according to uh, according to data in the ASEAN rankings for travel and tourism competitiveness, the Philippines ranks number eighty in terms of infrastructure, whereas our neighbors and direct competitors, such as Singapore, ranks number three. Thailand ranks number 32, Malaysia 35. In other words, one of the hurdles for the full development and maximization of the potential of the Philippines is the state of our tourism infrastructure in the Philippines. And with that, Madam Chair, uh, I would like to reiterate our plea for uh, the inclusion of a tourism infrastructure development fund with uh, the Department of Tourism. Actually, actually, Senkoko, Meron, there's this tourism convergence budget now worth 26 billion. In fact, during the last during the last year's deliberation, um, I already raised this issue. Kasi yung convergence budget, yung taga DOT, D tourism convergence budget siya. Yung taga DOT, hindi niya alam na may ganong budget. So like, uh, for example, sa DOTR, um, kasi yung part ng rehab ng airport can be considered as, diba, as part of the uh, sa, mata na, ay, sa mata ng national government, for tourism purposes, we are already spending this much. Pero, yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's a multi-purpose infra. Eh. I mean, di ba? It's not only for tourism, but for normal, uh, ano rin siya, transport, magagamit din siya. So, so ano tayo, tourism specific tayo, siguro Madam Che, kaya ang ating kausap talaga, konsulta na ang mga experts in, the, in tourism eh. 
I think oh. um San Coco pinaka specific na yung trip C. Yeah, trip C nga so pero this year 17 billion 2022 17 billion yung 50 15 ne? for next year. 15 pa for next year pero ang reklamo lang ni for is this year, 17. These are para multi uh, ano na multi uh, multi year obligation or multi year plan no so no new ideas no new no new sites are being pursued or developed by this uh, ano ano for next year 17 no this year 17 this billion year 17, for next 17, year 15 uh, billion uh, pero part ito ng sinasabi madam chair na convergence uh, budget no, ayun ang nakakalungkot na part hindi nag-emanate yung request from them. the DOT family. So, hindi ko alam kung saan nag emanate kung sino nagsasabi saan ilalagay yung 15 billion. Basta si DPWH, meron siyang 15 billion for TRIPC. Ayos yun at... Sino nga ba? Baka mas alam niyo kung saan, ang, kung saan... Kasi di ba parang ang... Kayo yung supposed to be may alam ko ano yung uh, development plan, but where we're gonna put the money does not come from you. So, saan ang gagaling yung listahan ng DPWH? Uh, Madam uh, Senator, the uh, uh, initiative comes from the local government officials and our congressional, uh, district congressional leaders. And it is sent to the regional, uh, sorry, uh, Madam Chair, it, it, uh, the, the initiative comes from the local chief executives, the LGUs, and our congressional uh, leaders. So they're on the ground, they know what's lacking, going to the beach, going to the falls, going to a pilgrimage site. They uh, gather all the documents, they submit it to the regional... Regional director submitted to the office of the secretary. They uh, complete the list and then they submit it to the DPWH. But what happens oftentimes is that if the um, budget is lacking, then it will be the other agency who will finally pick from, let's say, a list of 50 who they will prioritize. That was before, but starting 2019, they informed us that they will not anymore accept any new proposals. So these are all ongoing. So now that the, uh, we have a new secretary, she wants her own Guan, uh, initiatives, and then uh, it's not anymore, uh, you know. So her okay. agenda anymore is not so, uh, being... Okay, open. nakita rin ng DPWH that this, uh, it, it will take uh, uh, more than a year to finish projects. So sabi niya, wag, na, wag muna, tapusin lang muna namin ito. Okay, but as per conversation or information from DPWH, how many more years to finish the existing? Ito sinasabi nilang which do, existing list of projects that they do not want to expand as of the moment. How many more years? Kasi yun yung number of years na pipilay kayo. Sabihin, hindi, pipilayan nila kayo ng that number of years. Anong ilang years? Until next year na lang, uh, Madam Chair. Tw so 2023. Uh, 2024. Uh, 2024. Uh, Ang gusto ba nilang sabihin na for budget 2025, they will now be open to, to open again a new round of uh, infrastructure. In fact, we are planning to, uh, we, we will have to renew our uh, MOA with the... And based also on the Mandana's uh, uh, ruling. Uh, that was, siguro, yung existing yung MOA before the Mandana's ruling? Yes, I guess. Before, di ba? Oh, so, kaya nga. So, uh, napiktoan pa. Oh. Okay. So, naintindihan ko na yung, naintindihan ko yung ano, uh, point of view. No, no. Ko, ko may isa pa tayong dilemma. Because, because of the Mandana's ruling, devolved function ng tourism. So, like, for example, Teza, may, sinabihan na sila ng DBM, they can only spend for fifth and sixth class municipalities. So, so parang technically yung hands din natin are tied because of the Mandana's uh, rule. Because... Yeah, but the point is, to, pro to, pro to promote the Philippines as a destination, an attractive destination for tourists, uh, uh, more so with international travelers, kasi yun na yung low hanging, uh, saying na low hanging fruit, we have to also 
our Department of Tourism to promote uh, the Philippines as a destination. So, dun sa promotion San Coco, mukhang nak nakahanap na tayo ng pwedeng funding source kasi technically may 20 billion. Dahil ipag-isipan natin mabuti yun to, to promote. But promote. then uh, upon, after promoting, may salo sila, may 7 a seven point program mang ano ang DOT based on three principles yan yan maganda na the EE ano natin yun but mo no, na keeping in mind na siguro we have to accept some realities din na uh, kasi since tourism kasi parang federalism ano to principle eh tourism involves a place or a site which is in a location specific location so Pagdating sa federalism principle, if you can localize the, if you can pinpoint the place, that should now be under the jurisdiction of the lower level of government. So ganun yung, ganun yung point nila siguro rito na uh, devolve. Siyempre si tatay din ang sumulat nung, nung local government ko, believer in federalism. Naintindihan niya yung mga concepts na ganyan. So we have to accept some of these principles. Pero yun na nga, well, we have to how you and equip you to do what you have to do to promote the, the Philippines uh, dun sa plano po ninyo. Pero yung 20 billion, yun ang concern namin. If it's... Uh, uh, no, I have to look at the law uh, governing that. And then... Pero pasensya na ma'am kasi maybe if we can amend the law and release the full amount or the full potential of the 20 B, but it will not be entirely only for uh, TPB. You know, uh, is I know. You release it to some other tourism-related tourism-related uh, effort. Ma'am, what do you think? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I am, um, I think they explained to me that they are allowed to use 10%. So 10% of that is around 2B. But what was released to us was only the 1.1. 1 .1. So actually with that, Your Honor, a lot of to of um, ad placements, our presence in international, our domestic, our plan for domestic will suffer if we don't get the one point seven. So at least yes, Sana, oh, it was our request. Actually, um, San Coco, apparently, hindi sila kasama sa GAA. Oh, oh. Uh, you need. I don't know. Maybe we can just discuss. You maybe you can request uh, a bigger amount or. Baka masyado kayo masunurin pag sinabi ng DBM na ito lang yung amount na ilagay niya dun sa request. Baka yun I will find that. out, Madam oh, Chair. I'll so find out. new to the position. Yes, yes. Oh. So masyado silang mabait na pag sinabi ng DBM, 1.6 lang. 1.6 lang yung... Yung uh, uh, budget kasi is authorization for, to spend eh. So yung 1.1, nasa GAA po yun. 1.1 ninyo. Your one point one no still came from the from from the 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 S E G. It's it's chargeable to that account as well as bond, right? All of it. Yes. It's automatic appropriation. It's automatic. Yes. Under automatic appropriation, that's my special law that's existing. Okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. So if we can review that law, but if you if you I hope you will not mind. It will be a comprehensive review including the possibility of releasing the amount to more to other, to other uh, in tourism related activities and agencies Opo, kasi 20 billion in, in, at, at 10% not sure yes. 10 year uh, ano may <laughs> delay masyado we just have to review it kasi hindi ko rin kabisado yung uh, account na yun eh thank you Your thank you ma'am yes Siguro, who, is, who will be affected? Who, who's, who is a beneficiary of the travel tax among the agencies? Tessa lang, Tessa. Tessa uh, uh, family. Tessa lang. Tessa lang. 50% goes to us, 40% goes to CHED, 10% goes to NCCA. NCCA yung isa. Well, kasi I, I filed a bill to, ano eh, to, to eliminate, not to abolish the travel tax for Filipinos. Kasi constitutional right natin yan eh. Sabi ko, uh, it's, uh, ano tawag mo doon, um, uh, inconsistent that we recognize something as a constitutional right and yet with the exercise of the said right. So I hope I can be able to convince uh, the, the Congress to pass that bill into law 
Tamaan po talaga kayo dyan. But nothing prevents the GA, the GA from now uh, ano, uh, making up for the lost amount. Magkano po yung mawawala kung sakali? Maximum amount naman yan because hindi naman yan yung book amount coming from Filipinos. May, meron from foreigners dyan eh. Uh, Pre-pandemic figures, which is 2019, mga around 4 billion. 4B. Yes, 4B. That's the, that's, uh, that's the ceiling amount. Share lang yun ang, ano. Yeah, 50 lang yan. Share lang po ng share share lang. Lang. Share share lang. Lang. Share share na natin yung 8B. Yeah. Oh. And uh, 8B. Yeah, correct. Mr. 8B, but as I understand it, nilang naman Filipinos lang nagbabayad ng travel tax, di ba? Di ba, may, may, may foreigners na may travel tax. Well, dito po sa atin, Filipinos lang. Mr. Yeah, Filipinos lang. Outbound lang, Mr. Chair. Pero exempted yung OFW. Exempted yung OFW. Oh, oh. May mga exemptions okay. po. So, total, kung gano'n, totally 100% ma mawawala. Okay, big for, for pursuant to my bill. Because hindi ako nakatingin sa, ano, hindi ako nakatingin din sa amount because it's nakatingin sa principle eh. The constitutional principle. Actually, ko, there was a proposal to tax yung uh, incoming. Pero syempre may uh, resistance din kasi baka mas hindi tayo piliin nung uh, potential market natin because of that. But um, I guess siguro pwedeng pag-aralan because other countries are doing it. So why can't we, we do it also? Baka pwedeng naka naka-incorporate na dun sa ticket para hindi nila namamalaya na may tax pala silang binabayaran. Mark, sa mic, sa mic. So, uh, based on our research, Madam Chair, sa ibang bansa po, ganun po. Inbound, kasama na sa ticket po na binabayaran. Hindi, pero yung who pays for it? Okay, uh, Madam Secretary, doon sa seven uh, point agenda lang ninyo, worried lang ako doon sa second mo binanggit yung app. Kasi, uh, ano kaya yun? How will you develop that? Ano, magkano ang babudget mo rin? Kasi ang na-encounter namin talaga lately ngayon pagdating, when we digitize, when we employ uh, software, when we procure the hardware and the software, parati may problema. Parating ang ending, hindi nag-work. Parating sasabihin nila, ano yun yung... Nabibilaukan ba yun sa Tagalog? O, oh, yung nagka-crash dahil so yung mga gano'n. So, we always encounter all, all, all of these excuses after we have spent billions of pesos for uh, computerization. So, mag-ingat na lang po kayo doon. Uh, please understand it... Uh, Thoroughly, 100% before you implement it. Ang nakukuha ko impression, para siyang, kumari kung sa shopping man, ang analogy natin, you, you will have your own uh, Lazada or Shopee app for tourism. Is that is that the idea? Well, beyond that, Your Honor, uh, the idea is that, first of all, that we make it as convenient as possible for tourists to come to the Philippines. The study show that the preference now of uh, travelers is to book their flights, accommodations, and trips to certain destinations through their mobile phone. And therefore, we would have a captured market if we develop and uh, present an app where any and all uh, trips coming into the Philippines are accessible by way of the app. At present, the Tourism Promotions Board does have a travel app specifically directed for the Philippines, but it does not yet have the components the complete components of what we envision for the tourist lifecycle app. So to be able to address your concerns, Your Honor, what we can do is actually to collaborate with the TPB to work on the existing app, the existing app and to develop what is already existing into the tourist lifecycle app. Now, nevertheless, we would be needing a budget for this on the part of the DOP as far as the improvement of the app. Yan, siyempre nasa App Store yan or Android Store. The whole world can potentially download that. Actually, yun sa TPB, ilan na yung nag-download ng existing apps, no? Kasi siyempre kailangan natin makita yung cost-benefit. Kasi kung konti lang din naman yung magda-download, why, why pursue that app? Sige, magkano muna, mag how much did you spend to develop the app? And then from your records, how many downloaded the app? Yes po. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, Senator. Um, for the 
development cost po, um, which includes the mobile app, the web version of that app, uh, the content developed, and the marketing uh, to be spent. Kasi hindi pa po natin nasispend. It's a total of around 20 million po. Um, may maintenance pa yan. May maintenance pa How po. How much is the maintenance? The maintenance po within the, it's within the 20 million na po. So, uh, meron po tayong one-year contract na maintenance. So, after one year? I-renew po yung maintenance. Which is how much? Uh, nasa 10 million po. So, every, so, we will pay 10 million every year to maintain an app? Yes po. And ilan na yung nag-download ng app? Uh, right now po, as per our last data, we're about 80,000 downloads po. So again, so again mag 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 tayo, pencil pushing ngayon tayo, mag cost per download yes, kung, kung worth it, no? So, pero malaki yun. 10, 10 million maintenance a year, and then when you pay 20 million up front, so 10 million yung software development, then 10 million yung sale. Just to, oh, sorry, just to put it in context po, Madam Chair and Senator, actually, the reason... From a uh, development perspective po, actually maliit po yung 10M because we're paying for storage space, hosting, content development, and yung, um, yung security po. Kasi we use third-party services uh, that have their own security na po para po in terms of protecting the data and integrity of the app po. So, hindi na po tayo, kasi if we procure our own po, mm -hmm. that means we need to hire manpower. We need to buy the actual equipment for network security. We need to hire developers on our end, which will be actually more costly um, versus uh, putting it to a third party for maintenance po. Parang I think siguro sa Coco, dahil nga money is a problem, hindi ba may mga aspects dun sa promotions natin best left dun sa private sector din? And baka dapat yung government na lang would provide more incentives for them to to, invest, to, to put money. For example, di ba sa TESA, kaya nga nagkaroon tayo ng para to encourage yung private sector to spend for, for the industry. Kasi incentives, no? Mm. Okay. Okay. Basta ganun lang, basta may, may I, I heard na may plan on DOT proper for an app. Uh, we, I, we do not want to hear that justification that we need to maintain two apps, we need to pay, I, no. eh, mga ganun, ha? so you marry the ideas and then uh, make sure na Reasonable ang mga expenses natin. Takot na takot na ako pagdating sa mga ICT software you know, in the billions ang ano. Tapos, unhappy pa ang mga unhappy ang ending, unhappy pa ang mga user or ano, whatever. Puro, tsaka puro fraud investigation Actually, pa. interesting. Hmm. Sino sa'yo nag-download ng app? <laughs> is the app among is it, downloads it, meant, meant for us by an app? Meant for... Yung, yung app ba na yun? Uh, so for everyone po. Hindi, pero... Hindi, yun na nga eh. Kaya nga sa... Tayo. Hindi, ang expected, ang market niya yun is yung potential tourist, whether domestic... International and domestic. So it's for everyone. So like, yes. um, among the tourism family, who among you have downloaded the app? I downloaded the app the moment that they presented it to me, Your Honor. Yung yeah. Sa ibang ano? Basta mag-ingat lang tayo dyan. Ha? Basta uh, I, don't, I don't want future hearings na eh, nung nandito pa man ako wala na or si Secretary pa ba, Secretary o hindi na. We don't want future hearings sa DOT na issue, issue naman yan. Uh, but, and, and lalo na, Sen Coco, di ba, may fear ngayon na um, data is being uh, parang yung privacy, lalo, lalo na dito doon sa yung mga nagtitek. So hindi natin alam ngayon kung saan yung source ng leaks. Di ba? So baka may, may fear din from downloading mga local apps. Uh, how, much the, how, have you, ano, how much have you placed in your 2023 budget for yung yung second ano mo, second objective nyo.
Your Honor, uh, this budget is a composite, not just for the app, but also for uh, all the other forms of uh, social media management and placement. It's 68 million pesos. All the others. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to assure you, Your Honor and Madam Chair, that with a very little budget that we have, we will make sure that uh, we spend it religiously and to serve the purpose for which it has been allocated. Noting as well that the Philippines has one of the smallest branding budgets in the ASEAN region. Notwithstanding that, uh, coming having come from local government that also has its own challenges in terms of budget is concerned, as we depend almost entirely on our local income, you can rest assured that we will make sure that we spend each and every single so uh, fully guarding the interest of uh, the Filipino people and make sure that no peso is wasted in our efforts. Oh, okay, but that's a personal assurance. Eh? But so we, we want programs na hindi dependent sa integrity natin. We want uh, a program that talagang, you know, so, I'm sure wala pa naman components yung sinabi mo. Hindi pa ma-describe pa what app that is. Eh? So that 68 million is not the final story yet on the amount that you will spend on that that you mentioned kasi hindi pa nat, hindi pa klaro eh so just just uh, keep us informed no, on what what uh, what that app will be and then uh, make it attractive reasonable useful etc ayun po ang ating uh, gagawin amen okay sa tourism promotions board galing Ma madam chair ano na sig uh, yeah. ano na siguro ako uh, Mag-aaralan ko pa ulit itong uh, budget ng uh, Department of Tourism. Although uh, I find nothing, ano naman, nothing ob objectionable. Uh, dapat nga sa pontahan, tulungan. Dagdagan. Uh, oh. Dagdagan natin. Pag Minority floor leader. Nay, pero yung 9 billion request kasi ni Secretary, more of, uh, as I understand it now, more of uh, infra. The infra, the, the, the road to tourist areas, mga ganun ba? Yes, Your Honor, and we note as well that uh, for 2023, we have been allocated zero capital outlay. Okay, no. uh, you need capital outlay for what? Kasi yung kahit yung rin question 9B, admi admitted tayo na doon yun eh, di ba? Papunta sa eh, DPWH yun eh. For you, but the problem is our attitude with the DPWH. We will not. We will not want to entertain. For the department itself. Well, what, 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 what are you thinking of now? Why, why, why do you need the CEO? For what? We have very specific needs as far as our regions are concerned. Uh, for example, the enhancement of uh, the services that are made available to our LGUs by uh, improving uh, the offices of the regions, for example. In fact, there is one specific region that has no regional office. <laughs> and without capital outlay, we will simply not be able to provide that. Uh, it, uh, you did not request it at where Tier 1 nyo eh, yung capital outlay. Tier 2 nyo pinasok eh. Ah, so talaga hindi po pondohan ng DBM kasi hindi kayo humingi. Oh, iba yon, Iba to. Well, it was not requested during the tier one. So, hindi priority. So, since tier two siya, mas lalong hindi pagbibigyan ng DBM. Um, Your Honor, to clarify, uh, what we presented was a tier one capital outlay of 2.6 billion pesos, a tier two capital outlay of 4.5 billion pesos. Yun na lang, hindi yung 2.6 na lang, ano po yung laman nun? Ano po yun? For what? Can I, can I have it? Para maintindihan lang po. Yes. Yes. Um... For uh, tourism policy formulation and planning, 341 million. Market and product development, uh, 
Kaya pari, parang hindi capital outlay, ano yan, expenses yan. Capital outlay, sa mind ko, parang more of tangible eh, yung... Yes. Specifically, so, so, Your Honor, uh, market and product development, we proposed... Million to billion. Actually, Secretary, yeah. I have a document here that you submitted to DBM. Yeah. Nakasulat dito, Tier 1... Zero yung capital outlay nyo. Tapos tier 2, 207 million. And yun, wala pa yung itemize yung 207 million. Um, your Honor, if we may clarify, uh, that I believe that was a uh, May communication. That was not under the new administration. What no, happened was, was, sorry, uh, June 1. Bago pa rin nga. Yes, we assumed in June 30, uh, Madam Chair, we were allowed to recalibrate and we submit also to the DBM. Can you provide us a copy? Because you did not provide us a copy. Yes, Madam Chair, we would be happy to provide you the communication that we sent to the DBM. Madam Chair, submission na lang kasi hindi... hindi so, uh, basta nakuha kong figure you 2.6B and tier 1C only nyo, capital outlay, but... That's structure, right? Huh? The capital outlay means structures, right? Structures? Okay. Okay. Yes. Hey, what, what, where is that region? No, wala kang regional office. <laughs> Meron pala. What? What? Wala yung regional office. Ingon niya. Uh, I will let uh, Undersecretary uh, Shalomar Tamano in charge yes. of our yes, regions sir. answer the query, Your Honor. Uh, Madam Chair, most of our regions don't have offices. We we rent. Most pa pala. Hindi yeah, lang have central Visayas, which is the... Yeah, uh, the uh, Palawan region actually is a holding office at the uh, yes. building. Yes, what I meant to honor is that um, for the region covering Palawan, they have no physical office in Palawan itself. Pal the regional office of Palawan is in the DOT central office. Ah, uh, because -huh. for for a for a Asia, no? okay, that's so you, you that's part of the plans to 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 have a a presence uh, in Palawan. Okay, uh, so yes, Madam uh, Chair. <laughs> it's a uh, spot you know. and we don't have provincial offices which means the vehicles of the regions let's say Cebu we bring it to Negros we bring it to Bohol and these vehicles are very old it's not safe anymore for the staff uh, Madam Chair and uh, regional uh, officials vehicles kami ang nag-accredit ng mga vehicles na magaganda yung sa amin ng hindi ang bulok Hindi naman, hindi naman kailangan siyempre luxurious, pero kailangan naman po. Presentable, reliable, and ano. No. Okay. Innova lang dito Dep kami. Madam. Dependable. Sige. Sasakyan pala, Madam Chair, ang ano nila. Ay, isa request din nila. Masisi. Tap, wala sa request yung capital outlay yung sasakyan. Original yun. 2.6. Eh, pero may copy nga kami na 207 million lang oh, yun. Pa rin, eh. Yun pa din eh. Okay. Kasi uh, klaruhin na natin ito once and for all para alam na natin. Uh, there was a submission that began after June 1 eh. June 1 po yung date. June 1 yung date na binasa. It must be a, a document dated after June 30. Na ito eh. Mm. Aside from the DOT, ilang pa yung agencies na zero yung capital outlay? All, all the attached agencies, zero yung capital outlay. Actually, may document dito, Secretary. Ikaw na yung pumirma. 207 lang yung capital outlay. Yes, Sa tier 2. Sa 1, 0. 0. Madam Chair, may I refer you to Undersecretary of Finance, Shireen? Pamentuan? Yeah. Ay, uh, mas bagong document dyan. Madam Chair, just to clarify, um, initially, the previous administration was required to submit their budget proposal, right? Um, and they were based on the forward estimates provided by the DBM, which in the tier one didn't have 
an allotment for capital outlay already. And then when the new administration came in, there was a DBM memorandum circular that allowed them to submit a recalibrated budget, which is what we did, but it was disregarded. So when we submitted the form that you are referring to, which is a Senate form, um, we just followed also what was the in the title, which says the forward estimates and then what you submitted ng June. So, so, parang technically, so yeah. technically, parang we cannot recognize that document because hindi, hindi rin na rin nila, because ang official submission nila is the the old one, which is the zero capital outlay sa tier one. And then sa tier two, yung 207 million. Uh -oh. From what I understand is we were asked to submit and fill out the chart that came from the Senate. And there wasn't a column that allowed us to reflect the 12.2 that we proposed sometime in August. Um, but considering that when the NEP was released, it was also didn't reflect our proposal of the 12.2, we didn't include it anymore in that chart. To submit. Yes, that's what we will do, Madam Chair. We will submit oh, and then a copy of the document. And then yung mga attached agencies na zero yung capital outlay. Kung yes. ano yung wish list nyo. And you know, uh, we cannot, well, for sure I cannot promise the 9 billion because at the end of the day, may ahensya kaming kailangan pagkunan nung tango na yun. So, we'll try to accommodate as much as possible. Thank you. Madam Chair, Walana, thank you for your time and uh, of course you have uh, my full support because as we stated, we believe that it is a low-hanging fruit you know, to attract people, especially foreigners, to have a fun time uh, in the Philippines and uh, this is uh, yung tourist spot, yung tourist spots natin. God's blessing to the Philippines na po yun eh. So, pinanganak na tayo na ganun kaganda ang ating uh, republika, ang ating bansa. Ayusin na lang natin. So, eh, yung concern ko kasi, peace and order, pero hindi na sa inyo yan eh. No? Kasi, syempre naman, when they read the uh, ano, uh, ano, ano, broadcaster uh, shot, uh, ambush in the Philippines, eh, tama rin and in tourism pero syempre we, hindi na hindi na kayo yung isa challenge ko to to fix that ibang ahensya na po yan but, but it must be really ano, we must re be really uh, working with each other one one team one team Philippines uh, yeah, thank you Madam Chair thank you actually Sigo before we end hindi lang ako ng update dun sa Philippine retirement kung na-resolve nyo na yung issue dun sa age and then kung may coordination na kayo dun sa security sector when it comes dun sa mga uh, nag-retire sa atin. Actually, uh, meron na po kami plano para dyan na uh, tungkol doon sa mga gusto mag-retire dito sa Pilipinas. Pinopromote po namin na, uh, it's, na retirement heaven itong country natin. Pero na bago no, kasi di ba last, well, we raised this issue last year. Dati ho kasi 35 yung age. Eh, hindi naman retirement age yung 35. Actually, Nagkaroon na po ng adjustment. Uh, In-adjust na po namin sa 50 years old. So 50 na yung... 50 uh, years old lang. Uh, pwede mag-avail no... Mag-avail uh, ng retirement uh, program. And then may close coordination na po kayo sa um, Bureau of Immigration or sa yes. National Security Council, sa NICA. May, yes, may, may vetting process na kayo na yung mga mag apply for yes, uh, retirement. Kailangan may clearance muna from... Uh, other security agencies? Actually, ma'am, ang ginagawa namin, before we accept uh, any application, uh, we ask them to promise uh, us uh, clearance from, from their country or region uh, silang criminal record. Uh, and based on that, uh, 
may kinakoordinate rin namin sa database Interpol malaman natin. Ngayon yung mga nag-stay dito ng more than 30 days, hinihingan rin po namin ng clearance from the NBI. We still targeting the Chinese market. Actually, ma'am, uh, itong China's market, uh, from from the very start, uh, sa, halos lahat ng mga uh, mga retirees na dumarating, and number one ang uh, Chinese. Uh, during the from the time of uh, Arab Estrada, from the time of Estrada, dun tum tumasong ang uh, retirees nila. Pero nung in, during the inception. 1985 and 1989 and number one po eh, Taiwan is at saka 35 to 39 years old. Ah, well, ang, ang fear lang mo namin is baka nagagamit to in the guise of Pogo, sa Pogo pala sila. Actually, uh, so, uh, Sino kaya lang naman na investment? May close coordination kami sa Bureau of Immigration. Uh, based on our PRA's record, we have no Pogo workers who are special resident retiree visa holders. As per... Uh, Meeting with Commissioner Tansinko of the Bureau of Immigration, out of the 280 alleged Chinese illegal, illegal or undocumented Pogo workers, none are SRRB visa holders. Wala po. Ang, ang fear ko is baka yung existing visa holders nyo, eh, nagmumunlight pala sila sa go. Uh, pa... I don't think wala wala ko kayong capability to to check lalong lalo na 35 to 39 years old lang tong mga to napakabata. Na itaas na po namin sa 50 years old ngayon. Ang okay, pero may existing pa kayo eh yung mga 35 to 39 who ba tinanggal niyo na na you're not gonna renew their retirement visa. Actually uh, ang uh, ang batas po natin ay prospective hindi po retroactive, but then we usually monitor them. Kaya nga po, kung sakasakaling meron kami mababalitaan sa kanila na anybody would be involved in any POGO uh, business, uh, immediately we will coordinate with the Bureau of Immigration and recommend for the uh, cancellation of their visa and for their immediate deportation once they're involved in any illegal activities. So, kailan mo ba nag-start 35? Uh, no, when the uh, when PRA was uh, created way back 1985 during the time of President Marcos, ang uh, entry age for Jan is 50 years old. Yeah, kaya nga ako. Um, 1993 to 1996, at that time, there was no taker, hindi nulang lang dumarating na retirees. So, ang ginawa during the time ng noon ng mga uh, board of trust noon, they adjusted the age from uh, 50 first to 40 and then later to 35. And then it went on, unless uh, uh, inabutan ko na yan, 2016, and then uh, noong 20... Uh, 2019 hanggang 2020, binago na po namin yung age bracket from to 50 years old. Okay. Um, and ako lang for the record, yeah, Madam Chair. Uh, ah, tapos ka na ba sa PRA? Hindi. Uh, um, we will just excuse si Secretary because meron siyang yeah. cabinet meeting. Yes, yes. Or meeting with in Malacanang. Yes, yes. Thank Secretary. you, thank you very much and we will try as much as possible to accommodate your requests. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Your Honor, the Thank you. Salamat. Um, my undersecretaries will continue to be here to address your queries. Salamat. Tapos na rin naman tayo. Pero ito lang for the record, uh, Madam Chair, kasi tinanong ko siya kanina who pays the travel tax. Ito galing sa inyo sariling website. Eh. Who pays the full travel tax? Number one, citizens of the Philippines. Number two, taxable foreign passport holders. Number three, 
non-immigrant foreign passport holders who have stayed in the Philippines for more than one year. So, yung proposal ko, if it becomes law, number one, pero yun yung bulk ng amount. Def definitely maapektuhan. But meron din palang, meron din uh, foreigners, non-Filipinos, who pay the travel tax. Yun yung tanong ko kasi kanina. Tama ba, sir? Tama ba, Mark? Uh, sir, sir, based on our records, 95% mostly Filipinos talaga. Ah, that's correct. Oh, Pag sinabi mo, 95% is not 100%. So, yeah, open yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, Tama. So, talagang... Yung amount, ma-drastically ma ma-reduce. Ah, tama. Okay. That's, uh, that's considered naman. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I would like to rec uh, recognize the online presence of Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Tapos ka na ba? Okay. Uh, Sen. Robin Hood, may tanong po ba kayo? Magandang uh, tanghali po. Uh, mahal na taga-pangulo. At uh, magandang tanghali po sa isang chairman din po ng uh, namin sa PDP laban ng atin pong minority leader mabuhay po at uh, sa atin pong uh, mga bisita isang uh, magandang uh, hapon po sa inyong lahat ako po ay uh, katulad po ng mga narinig ko magmula kanina sa mga kasama ko pong mga mahal kong senador lahat po kami ay nakasuporta diyan sa tourism ano dahil uh, sabi nga po ng ating minority leader Napakaganda po ng Pilipinas at uh, yaan po ay likas na binigay sa atin ng uh, Panginoon Diyos. Ang, uh, meron lang po akong isang uh, katanungan, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Pwede po bang magtanong? Yes po. Pwede niyo na po okay. itanong. Apo, marami pong salamat. Kasi po nung naghiring po kami ng ating mahal na senadora Pia Caetano sa National Museum, na itanong ko po doon sa National Commission on Culture and Arts, National Historical Commission, sa National Museum, sa National Library, tinanong ko po sa kanila kung merong koordinasyon ang uh, atin pong uh, tourism sa kanila. Ang sabi po nila, wala daw pong koordinasyon ang uh, tourism at ang mga ahensya na ito. Eh nakakalungkot po ito sapagkat uh, Kanina po, narinig ko po ang ating mahal na kalihim at uh, ang kanyang mga kasama. Sinabi po nila na kanilang uh, talaga pong uh, uh, pinopromote ang ating kultura. Paano po kaya yun? Totoo po ba yun na wala pong koordinasyon ang uh, ating pong uh, tourism at ang kagawaran din po ng ating uh, historical commission? Sino po ang um, sasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasas
cultural activations pag landing. So we identified around four, four airports already. Uh, and then we're waiting for, for the, their plans, but we're very excited. So they want a multi, like a cultural experience as they land. I mean, not just a billboard, but, you know, we can have our weaves, you know, representations of our food or some dance or depending on a festival. But uh, we're moving forward with that. Actually, yesterday I texted um, the director Margie Moran of the CCP uh, because she's also involved with the NCCA. So we're meeting soon to finalize. And then we will align also with the projects of our secretary with the, with the, with the billboards and also everything are, so everything's aligned. So rest assured, uh, Senator, we will make sure. Mm -hmm. Siguro, gusto oh. Senator Robin Hood, siguro idadagdag ko lang kasi based sa aking experience, um, in fact, magkasama kami ni Yusek Sherin the other day, uh, the other day or the other week, sa board meeting ng NCCA. And then, dun sa meeting na yon na-announce na apparently may, may exhibit si Kidlat Mimic sa National Museum this month. So, parang nag-uusap kami ng dalawa na, ha, may ganong big event kasi nga itong exhibit na to ay unang ginawa sa Madrid tapos dinala dito sa Pilipinas. Na parang... Bakit walang ano, kulang sa promotions, di ba? So, siguro baka mas maigi, hindi ko alam, baka pwedeng maging bahagi na yung TPB sa NCCA Board or sa National Museum Board para updated sila kung ano yung mga events na kailangan nating promote. Or... So, Madam Chair, just to add to that, uh, Mr. Senator, I think to add to the sentiments of Senator Nancy is that we have already started to also align our calendars to check um, what are the activities that our attached agencies have and what we can um, share with TPB so that they can promote all of these activities uh, in a massive campaign. And uh, as part of our market and product development since the secretary has also mentioned earlier that we will be doing regional tourism circuits we want to make to ensure that these um, national museums heritage sites are all included in the tourism circuits that we are developing so rest assured that we will be considering all of the programs and activities of all of these agencies thank you okay uh mahal na taga paulo yeah, isa na lang po Sige po, kahit tatlo, apat pa. <laughs> <laughs> Salamat po. Uh, ano lang po, uh, baka po pwede po ma-explore po ng ating uh, tourism. Kasi po ngayon, uh, nabanggit po nung isang uh, official kanina, yung patungkol po sa mga ASEAN na uh, Asian countries, ano? Southeast Asia, lalo na po, ano? Yung uh, kanilang, uh, uh, meron silang ano eh, may roots po sila dito eh sa Pilipinas eh sana ma-explore po natin yung Austronesian languages na tinatawag at dito po kasi uh, talagang uh, pag itinerase po ng Southeast Asia yung kanilang roots makikita po nila talaga na sa Pilipinas eh sa Pilipinas po nagkumpisa lahat napakaganda pong i-promote po nito napakaganda po nitong uh, tingnan lang po ninyo pag-aralan po ninyo yung Austronesian languages Uh, muli po, uh, sinasabi ko po at uh, ako po'y nangangako po sa inyo na ako po ay katulad po ng mga kasama kong mga senador kanina, nakasuporta po ako sa inyo sa turismo. Maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Maraming salamat po, Sen. Robin Hood. Sigurado kang wala kang ngatlong tanong? <laughs> wala na po, wala na po. Uh, Sinenyasan na po ako dito, naitanong na pala. <laughs> thank you po, thank you po. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Um, anything else? May gusto ba kayong idagdag or ibawan? Uh, kung ano yung idadagdag mo, ma'am, yun na rin ang idadagdag ko. Basta <laughs> mas malaki yung idadagdag mo sa <laughs> minun. <laughs> Um, kung wala na pong katanungan or kung meron pa kayong gustong ipaalam sa committee, we can already um, suspend this hearing and I will move that the budget of the 
Department of Tourism and its attached agencies be submitted to plenary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.